pick uh, some background noise. And also, if you want to speak, kindly use the hand function on your Zoom. It's on the bottom side. I'm sure all of you are now familiar on, on how to use Zoom. There is a hand function there. So if you really need to speak, uh, you can you can raise it, and I will I will try and uh, and look out for you and give you a chance to speak. But again, because we have a mix of participants, I will really encourage us to use the chat function. I think that will be much more easier and manageable. So if you have something, it could be a question or a comment, please make use of the chat function. I'll always be on the lookout just to see who has posted something so that I can share it with the group. But I will encourage us to use the, fun the chat function as much uh, as possible. I understand there are also some of you who are joining us with their mobile phones. So please be conscious of, 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 of the microphone. Sometimes you may get an incoming call when you're using your microphone. So please be conscious and don't, uh, uh, don't be in a position where, where you, you, you tell us your secrets. <laughs> so all I can urge you, those who are using mobile phones, please be conscious. And to the speakers uh, who are going to share their presentations or, you know, talking points, I will also urge you to manage your speaking pace for the sake of the interpreters. So there is simultaneous interpretation that, will, that is provided. If you go to your Zoom at the bottom screen, uh, part of the screen, you'll see an icon. It's a world icon called interpretation. So you can click on that and you can choose the language. So let's manage our pace when we are speaking. I know some of us can speak very fast, uh, but let's be mindful of our brothers. So with those few remarks, I, I would not like to take much of this introductory session. I would like to invite Mr. Thomas Essel, the Afrika Secretary General, uh, to start us off with the opening remarks. So Thomas, over to you. Thank you very much, John, the moderator, for uh, starting us off this meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to wish you all good morning, wherever you are. Um, I note that I have seen we have FO officials in the room who have joined. There are some in Africa who have also joined. There is even one in USA who, who, who has also joined. So we note all those and then include the financial sector and insurance sector players. As I look at the names, I see a lot of you around. And then other colleagues joining online. I have seen some from Mombasa joining and from other places. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to welcome you to this validation webinar from all over Africa and the teams in the USA, Rome, Cote d'Ivoire, etc. What we are doing today is a collaboration between ACA, Global Network for Capacity Building to increase access of small scale fisheries to financial services, what we call CAFI SSF network, and then FAO. As the moderator gave his introduction about when the work started, I believe I don't need to labor that point. But I take this opportunity again to load the collaboration because since last year, this collaboration which uh, Tidra Top Thomas has worked very well in undertaking this assignment. 
And what makes it even more important is that it is an assignment in a sector that needs a lot of attention. If you look at our fishing communities, you can see that they are one of the fast growing populations. And yet their livelihoods are threatened. They don't have access to credit. And so their businesses remain what they are. But what we have noted is that there is also a great potential to grow this sector. So the FAO and uh, Global Network commissioned this work, which is around the baseline rapid assessment of the current situation of financial services provision to small scale fishers in Africa. In other words, we are looking at how financial institutions are supporting this sector, which appears to be neglected. So we are doing a baseline to find what is really on the ground. So the purpose of this validation meeting is to confirm the findings of research that we have under undertaken led by Africa. And we want to see that in the end, we should be able to confirm or otherwise and then build consensus on how to improve the small scale fisheries access to funds so as to grow the sector. I look forward to the various presentations that will be made during this validation exercise. There will be discussions, there will be questions and answers. So I want to urge all of you to be contributory participants. I believe that the outcome will give us the real situation on the ground in terms of financial and insurance services provision to small scale fisheries sector. So that in the end, we all will find ways and means to promote services to this sector. As I end, I will want once again to wish you a good welcome to this webinar. I wish that we will go through quickly and to discuss all the issues that come up so that in the end, we get the outcome that we all desire. Thank you very much for your attention. Over to you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you so much, uh, Thomas, for, for those welcoming remarks. Uh, now we have your blessings, and I think we can start. So I would like to invite uh, our first speaker, uh, that is Suchitra Upare. Uh, I wonder if Suchitra has managed to uh, connect. I know she has been having challenges. Um, so Chitra, are you on? Um, I want if Chitra is not ready, even though we have her presentation, I wonder if I can reach out to her colleagues, uh, Thomas, uh, Raymond. Uh, Thomas, I know you're the next speaker. I wonder if you can uh, do a condensed version of your speaking points and Suchitra's. Good morning, John. Um, I can try, uh, okay. but I invite Suchitra to jump in as soon as her audio connects anytime and, and the same for Raymond. I will start with my part. I will speak uh, just a, a little bit on the collaboration between FAO and Africa that led up to this uh, validation meeting. But first of all, I would like to welcome everybody also on behalf of FAO. Um, I know we have also a French speaking group uh, here today. Uh, alors, bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Uh, J'espère que ça va aller avec la traduction. Um, I think it's, it's very exciting that uh, we have such a big group of people together here from such a diverse geography. And I, and I really thank you, John and Thomas, uh, for the work that you have put into this 
uh, project. And I think Africa is in an amazing position uh, in terms of its you know, institutional status to gather such a crowd from uh, so many countries all over Africa. And that to me is very exciting if uh, we have a meeting with participants from all over the place. That, that's always really cool. Um, so I will just speak a few minutes, not too long on the project itself and, and what we have done, especially for those of you who weren't able to uh, participate in earlier meetings about the project, you might be interested in what is this really all about. Um, first of all, the, the project is, is, is part of a larger effort, and as was Thomas have already said, uh, in trying to first of all understand uh, the role of small scale fisheries in Africa, but also outside of Africa, and also to understand a bit on where these small scale fisheries stand in terms of access to financial, access to financial services. Um, so yeah, I hope you can still hear me, good. Um, and um, to you know, follow up on this first step of trying to understand what role small scale fishers play and how they are able to access financial services. Uh, we had a first step in the project, which was an identification uh, of key stakeholders in the sector all over Africa, and also an assessment of you know, what is the current status of the provision of financial services to small scale fisheries. For that, we had done a survey, but also Africa has done a desk review. Uh, you have done interviews with key players. So I think uh, a, a number of activities led up to, uh, led up to uh, the result that you have put in writing later. Um, and obviously it's, a, it's an almost impossible task to, you know, looking at the whole continent, looking at what is the status of financial service provision to small scale fishers. Uh, but I think you have done a really good job in, in trying to get some key players from all over the continent um, together and to discuss some next step steps. Because not only did we want to know what is going on with small scale fishers and their access to financial services, but we also wanted to look at together with you, uh, what can we do to improve it? And, and I think, Quickly, we realized, I mean, the best way to do it is probably to look at what is already there and try to learn from what we already know, what we already have, and try to come up with some good examples. And that is what we did. Uh, I would already like to thank the speakers that are afterwards going to present some of these examples. Uh, and please take these examples as learning examples, right? I mean, they can provide some inspiration, some motivation for others to follow up or to discuss or do it a bit differently, um, you know, adjust it to your context, but it's really meant to inspire you uh, to follow up on these examples. I'm very much looking forward to hearing them. And then finally, final step would of course be to look forward into the future. We did, didn't wanna stop here. We want to look into the future. We wanna see where can we learn from these examples and where can we have targeted capacity building activities with you as partners. Um, and how can we follow up and then in the end actually try to improve financial access uh, for small scale fisheries. I believe in the end of the workshop, we are also going to hear a little bit about other activities that FAO is uh, undertaking, looking forward into the future in terms of trying to promote blue economy and small scale fisheries in Africa. Um, but this is also meant for you to look you know, forward and think about what can you do um, and do you maybe need help with that? Do you, do you need some support? And then I think this is the right forum uh, to discuss any ideas that, that you might have, uh, knowing very well, of course, that time is a bit limited, which is why I will stop here in terms of presentation of the project itself. And I ask again, Zuchitra, I might have heard you there. Um, I ask you again to try and come in uh, and tell us a bit about Small scale fishers in Africa. Zuchitra, are you here? Mm, don't hear her. John, I, I would suggest that we wait for Suchitra. Maybe she can come in a bit later. Uh, I mean, after all, she's in New York and I believe it's in the middle of the night. Uh, so poor her for getting up in the middle of the night, anyways. Uh, I will give it back to you. I think um, 
let's then take some more time for the interventions of the other of the other participants. Uh, here's some other voices, and then if Suchitra can wants to come in later, we can we can do that later as well. Once again, thank you from FAO. Uh, thank you, John Thomas. Great work up until here. Um, I'm excited to you know go the last steps of the projects and see what comes out of the of the webinar today. Thank you, and over to you. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Thank you for for those welcoming remarks and setting the tone again in terms of our journey with you. I know, yeah, it's been quite uh, a process. Um, covering the whole of Africa can be a little bit tough, uh, but I, I want to thank our members and also non-members who are quite willing uh, to share, you know, their, their views and, and information about what they, they're doing in the fishery sector and even what they intend uh, to do in the sector. So thank you so much. I think, uh, like, like you said, we'll probably give Suchitra some time to join uh, because her presentation is also very important. Uh, Such Suchitra represents uh, an another network uh, which is called the Global Capacity Network uh, for, for Small Scale Fisheries. Uh, it's, always a, it's, uh, it's a long acronym, but it's, it's basically trying to, you know, harmonize uh, some of these capacity building interventions uh, in the small scale fisheries sector. So let's, let's give Suchitra some time uh, to join. Uh, for those joining from uh, Mombasa, uh, we were there last week and uh, I know Suchitra doesn't know this, but she, she would be happy to know that there is a small extension of CAFI SSF uh, that was formed in Mombasa. So we are calling it CAFI SSF, SSF Kenya chapter. And I know some of them are here. I wish, you know, Suchitra would have been, uh, you know, here to just also share her views on, on the network. But nevertheless, I think we can move on with the next speaker, who again uh, is, is my boss, Thomas Essel. I hope you're ready with your presentation. Uh, you can start us off in sharing the findings of the of the survey. Over to you, Thomas. Thank you very much, uh, John, uh, for for taking us through up to this stage. Uh, it's unfortunate we don't have Suchitra because her input will have provided some basis for the presentation that uh, I'm going to give. But in order not to uh, repeat a lot of things, I will leave out some portions about the importance of the small fisheries. So this is the topic that FAO uh, identified, not only in Africa, but in the Pacific nations also. That fisheries is a sector that is important, that has a lot of people employed, that sustains their livelihood, and yet that there are challenges on all fronts, technical, financial, whatever. So FAO on its own uh, uh, commissioned this work, which as Thomas said, we have collaboratively uh, done together. The topic is baseline rapid assessment of current microfinance, credit and insurance services provision to small scale fisheries in Africa. Let's look at the outline. We will look at the scope of the baseline, the methodology, the profile of respondents, key survey findings, and then uh, key findings from desk review and stakeholder consultations and conclusions. But before we go on, I want to explain to you why the desk review and the stakeholder consultations is where it is. Ideally, it should have come up because it is the desktop review that informs you as to uh, your questionnaire, your methodology, and the scope and everything. But what happened was that we did a lot of consultations 
that beefed up this area. So we felt that if we bring it to the end, uh, it, will, it will also be appropriate. So that is why you see it there. Going through, what is the scope of this uh, study? And Thomas already mentioned some of them. We are identifying financial services providers and insurance institutions involved in uh, supporting the small scale fisheries sector. We are identifying main microfinance credit and insurance programs in support of this sector. Three, identifying capacity building needs of financial and insurance providers to finance the small scale fisheries sector in Africa. And then fourth, and not the uh, least, is understanding the perception from the finance sector on the challenges and opportunities uh, in the sector. The methodology, we did the desk review, then we, based on that, we came out with a questionnaire which was discussed by both FAO and Africa. And then we disseminated these uh, questionnaires, the survey tools through the survey monkey, which we have in Africa here. Uh, and this was done during our AGM when we informed our members and, and, and they bought into the idea and they helped us to fill them. And then last but not the least, member and partner consultation. This is key because uh, if you look at survey monkey, some of the answers that are given, they are just raw answers with no explanation, in-depth explanation. So we did these to confirm and to support the answers that were provided in the questionnaire. What are the profile of the respondents that we uh, used? Um, let me push this aside, good. Oh, sorry. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, we can hear you, Thomas. Oh, but I you. have lost my, 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 uh, <laughs> my slides. Oh. Um, okay. Um, okay, I'll continue. So we are talking about uh, sorry. Okay. I will continue when when the slides come. <laughs> the, we continue from where the slides are. So uh, we are looking at Okay, I'm back, please. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Sorry, technology was giving me some 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 uh, uh, challenges. Uh, so the profile of the respondents from the graph, we can see the countries. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay. From the uh, uh, graph, we can see the number of countries that participated uh, in the uh, program. 33 financial institutions 
responded successfully. They completed the survey, whilst 15 were incomplete. This gives a percentage of about 69 percent uh, 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 response. And there were four uh, insurance institutions that were there. And what we realized was that these countries have diverse financial institutions, circles, MFIs, development uh, banks, commercial banks, and then insurance institutions. So these were the institutions that we used. Now we come to the uh, key uh, survey findings. Here you look at the financial outreach, that is percentage of financial institutions lending to small scale fisheries. If you look at the graph, the question that was asked was, does your institution provide any financial or credit services to fisheries and uh, culture sectors? If you look at the responses, you can see that the green is representing those who said yes, the blue, no, and the yellow is the I don't know. And you can see that the green forms about 62, 63% thereabout. So the key finding that we found here was that small scale fisheries are not completely ignored by the financial sector players. It is just that uh, they constitute a small part of the lending activities of these financial, uh, various financial institutions. And then from the survey, we also saw that many of these institutions have branches even along the coastal area where you have many of the fisher folk. So uh, that gives hope that at least we have them close to where they are. And we can confidently say that two thirds of the respondents serve the SSF sector, but this constituted only a small part of their respective uh, portfolios. If we look at the next graph, which shows the scope of financial services and products for SSF, we can see the responses of the financial institutions as to whether they are financing uh, the fisheries, marine, or the aquaculture. And here again, what we saw as the key finding is that the SSF, which is a small scale fisheries is not unknown to the financial institutions. That means that they know of their existence. And some even have uh, some few dedicated products or focal points that serve that uh, sector. Some of them mention that uh, normally they require guarantees as social collateral, since many of them uh, cannot provide the solid collaterals that commercial banks will be demanding. And those uh, finances that are given out are for working capital. So you can see from the graph that those who said, yes, we support only the fisheries sector is 7.1. Yes, only for the aquaculture is 10.71. And then we have yes to both which is 17. So put together, you will get about 38% um, or so who, which serve the sector. And you see a large chunk of 57% saying no. This shows that there are still quite a number of them there which don't have any support for the sector that we want to promote. When we come to performance of the small scale fishers credit programs by the financial institutions, we, we, we have some interesting results. The key finding here is that the performance of the small scale fisheries credit programs was not rated very positively. And we can understand why. Some indicated there are a, no, a number of points that they were to respond to. Good, neutral, bad, very bad, I don't know. 
So if you look at the responses that we have here, you can see that, look for example, the, the, the very good, there is nothing there. I don't know, you have some values there. But what is interesting here that I want us to note is that if you look at the, those who are saying good from 2016 down the up to 2019, it has been increasing gradually. So this gives hope that if we even want to look at the perception as to whether they are lending, it is increasing from 23% in 2016 to about 39% in 2019, which is good news. So it means that it is a fertile ground we can uh, explore. Alternatively, if you look at the bad, the column for the bad and the very bad, starting from below 2017, uh, you can see that if you take bad, for example, 2017, it was, uh, 2016, it was 17, 2017, 23, and then it reduced in 2018. Hey, sorry. Uh, if you look at 2016 to 2019, it has reduced to 11%, which is also an impression that the bad perception is going down. The same applies to the very bad column, which also moves from 17% in 2016 to about 11% uh, in 2019. So there is that uh, perception that the sector is a sector that can be uh, assisted to grow because we see some positive trends. Capacity building is an, a, an issue that came out very big in all the, uh, uh, the, the, the respondents that we spoke with. And if you go through the key finding that we also found was that uh, th th there is need to go beyond the survey to adequately define capacity building needs. This is because the capacity building needs are broad. And so we have to uh, go beyond to identify each of them so as to be able to prescribe the correct uh, capacity building program for them. If we look at the graph or the table that shows the responses to the capacity building, we can see that the top three value chains are the ones that were given high priority. That is business characteristics of fishes and aquacultures, risk assessment of fisheries and aquacultures activities, market assessment to determine microcredit demands and needs of fishing aquaculture sectors. These were priority sectors that most of these institutions saw, which means that for the financial institutions to be able to support the sector, we need to be able to support them to minimize risks. So what capacity building will do that? Make a very good market assessment, cash flow analysis, those ones. So in that there are grounds and then there are other points there which also uh, follow. But in terms of priority, where we'll have to start are the risk management, the market assessment, and the characteristics of the fisheries sector, which we need to de-risk. So we move on to the provision of financial and credit services to fisheries aquaculture sector business. Here, the key finding that we found from the questionnaire is that financial sector players are also aware of other actors and programs supporting small scale fishery sector. And when we put this uh, question to them as to who are those who provide supporting uh, uh, activities for them to be able to operate, the graph below shows how the respondents 
uh, uh, indicated. We have the gray color representing those who responded yes. And then we have the, do we call it uh, red or what color, the no. And then we have the blank. So you can see clearly that those uh, other organizations that are supporting um, these uh, sectors and which the financial institutions are aware include the fisheries organizations themselves. We have government taking a chunk of it, which means that government is play, playing a prominent role since the private sector is not supporting much. And then we have other uh, supporting institutions, which was not specified, but in our um, in our engagement with members, we realize that some of them fall in the informal sector. Some of them are even government institutions which they could not clearly identify. So that is what the others represent. But for further work, we need to perhaps come out with a questionnaire that will give examples of what constitute the other so that we can get a clear uh, response from those areas. Summary of key findings from desk review, which I, I have titled that we will do more of stakeholder consultations because some of the literature may come in Suchitra's uh, work. What we found out was that not all financial institutions are best suited to financing the small scale fisheries sector. We saw clearly that as for commercial banks, they, 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 their first objective is commercial interest. So most of them even don't support the sector. If we look at the exam, one example from Nigeria that we got about the Sterling Bank. They said it clearly that uh, they support aquaculture, which is easier to monitor compared to uh, the fisheries, if we may call it the marine. So the bank expressed their reluctance to finance artisanal fisher folk due to their migratory habits. And that is a challenge. So who will do that? But luckily for us, we have also have some institutions which have passion for this sector. And one of them is Natsif in Zambia, Cusco uh, in Kenya and other uh, uh, places. These are microfinance institutions which despite the challenges in the sector, they have found ways and means to support them. So is a Bagri of Niger, which is also a development finance institution because it is a developmental, uh, it has a developmental financial uh, mandate. They also support the sector. So clearly you can see that rather it is the small institutions which are in these coastal areas and in these areas which give support more than the bigger financial institutions which are much more commercially oriented. We also noted the role of the public and private sector participation in the sector. And it is important to note that the public sector, uh, international development partners and technical providers seem to be quite active in the sector, which means that uh, if we really want to work in the sector, we must get all these partners uh, together to work on various products. We realize that private this sector involvement is weak. Even where they are involved, uh, the contribution is not something that is of bigger scale to potentially uh, help these fishes in terms of uh, accessing uh, financing. What stood out uh, clearly was that, uh, that, that, that for the private sector, the areas that we think they must support to help promote the sector is the small institutions, which we may call the circles, which may, we may call the microfinance institutions or cooperatives. These have potentials that are untapped. 
and because they have mega resources, they are not able to do much. So if there is any support, the target should go to these uh, small financial sector uh, players. And what is even important about this is that they are closer to the communities. So they know their habits and how they can, they can accommodate all those things. Technical services role, we have found it to be very important, even though we have seen it limited in almost all the countries. The one that fascinated us most was this uh, World Fish Center in Zambia. They uh, are doing well. They pro uh, provide capacity building services to small scale fishery entrepreneurs, development partners, and NGOs, and even financial sector players. They create market linkages for these institutions to be able to sell what they have. They conduct feasibility studies. Otherwise, they conduct research to know the challenges in the area so that they can prefer solutions. And they identify uh, uh, investment opportunities uh, for, 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 for the sector. So uh, going forward, it is an area that we must take on board whenever we want to do any work in the fisheries work because they are already there and their work will be good to support what financial institutions want to do. What about the contribution of the insurance sector? This is very minimal. In fact, from literature, not more than 3% uh, penetration <laughs> in Africa for insurance. And uh, because of that, that is why they also don't have access uh, uh, to these financial resources. Key uh, uh, insurance institutions that we worked with are ECA Africa and then uh, of Kenya. It's an African uh, insurance institution. And then Naik in Nigeria, a very big one. And what we found out from both institutions is that demand even by financial institutions for insurance is very low. So if even financial institutions, is, it is very low, how much less the fishery sector? Because the fishery sector, those they see this insurance as a cost to them. And so already they think that they don't have. So why do they have to take up this cost? So this is an area that we might have to build capacity, build awareness in all the countries, including the financial institutions, so that we can together support the sector. Conclusions, I will mention just four of them. We see clearly that the aqua sec uh, aqua aquaculture seems more attractive among financial sector players than the capture fisheries. As we alluded to, they can be monitored. They are at home, you can easily reach them. But the fishers, sometimes they will even relocate, you will not identify them. So the preference for the financial institution is for aquaculture. Two, the role of technical service providers, which we have uh, mentioned already. What we think is that uh, future work must leverage the good things that these uh, technical service uh, providers are making in wherever they are. They are supporting entrepreneurs to better understand the sector, as we saw from uh, NatSafe. So uh, we, it's something leveraging this sector is a key thing that we must take going forward. Thirdly, we, we also conclude that the fisher folk are largely not well organized formally. Some, some sort of organization is there. But as to be highly formal to be attracted to financial institutions is another matter. So this study is also saying that uh, there is need to uh, look at that area for further work and then build capacity in a way that can help them to formalize in a manner that will make them attractive. And then finally, we also conclude that there is real and increased perception that the small scale fisheries sector are very risky. 
So if they are uh, very risky, we, we, we see that the potential to de risk the SSF sector is there. Once we de risk the sector through capacity building, Hello? Sorry, what happened? Yeah, it seems we have lost connection to Africa. I mean, I, I am not the only one I feel. Uh, let's give it another minute or two and try for Thomas to reconnect. Sure. Uh, because I think also John seems to have dropped out of the meeting. I will send him an a message and then they can try to reconnect. Thomas, we can't hear you at the moment. Can you unmute, please? Thank you very much. We are very sorry there was complete power cut in the whole of this area. So we, we tried to connect through um, uh, the hotspot. So as I, I was concluding that we made, I we made uh, more than four conclusions, but the key conclusions are that aquaculture seems attractive and popular because uh, the financial institutions feel that they can monetize and have more control. We also saw the role of technical services was important and that it can be left because they are in the area and they provide technical services that suit the, the, the uh, small scale fishes. Thirdly, we conclude that the fisher folk are largely not well organized formally. And as we said, uh, there, there is some form of uh, organization there, but if we want to attract financial institutions, they have to be organized in a way that even de-risks them more or less. 
so that the financial institutions uh, will support them. And then last but not the least, we found that there, were, there is increased perception that small scale fishes are very risky. And this one we have seen that it is true. And for that reason, some few financial institutions are finding a way out. And we have examples of uh, guarantee schemes in both Ghana and Nigeria, uh, Gessel and Nessel, which have incorporated technical assistance and insurance in the, in the lending products uh, that they have for, for the sector. So in a nutshell, these are the, 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 the summary of the survey that we did with FAO. And as Thomas said, I will add that this is just a step showing what is on the ground. Further work needs to be done in this area, not only by us, but it will provide the grounds for any organization wanting to do research to use this as a baseline. On that note, I will say thank you for your attention. <clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, I am I am lucky. I I connected through uh, what do we call it? Uh, what spot? John is still trying to uh, come back. So I will continue when he comes back, then he will continue. Perhaps before we go to q and I can see Suchitra is back. Suchitra, are you ready? Suchitra? Oh, she's not ready. OK, then we, we will have one or two Q&A. Is there any um, question? Can you hear me, please? We can hear you. Thanks. I think oh, okay. that okay. Suchitra is yes. still not yes, on the line. Okay. 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 There were interruptions, but I hope that you, you heard the presentation. Are there any uh, questions that uh, anyone may want or a comment uh, that you want to make? because we are validating. So you need to confirm or otherwise, so that we improve uh, what we have done so far. Okay. We may reserve our questions. Move on to the next uh, group of presentations and I will give them not more than 10 minutes each. We are going to have case studies presentations. When we did the survey, we realized that we needed more understanding of the sector. So based on the survey, we identified some good uh, institutions that gave good account of themselves in the survey for them to make case studies for us to add to this work. And the uh, uh, CRDB Bank of uh, Tanzania, NATSIV of Zambia, and then Bagri of Niger. So without wasting much time, I will invite CRBD Bank of Tanzania. Magaresi Shaban is uh, the uh, representative here. He is the principal relationship manager, retail banking. So he has direct contact with the Fisher folk. Magaresi, you are welcome to take us through your case studies in 10 minutes. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon, all of you. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so to start, given the time limit we have, I'll just pinpoint uh, key points to share with the audience. 
and to start is on the geographical location of the country and the resources we have for supporting the fishing industry. Tanzania has been uh, endowed with a huge resource in terms of uh, fishing environment. And it is based on this that we see we have every reason to make uh, financial inclusion at the high level, especially to small uh, fishermen, small scale fishers. Uh, as we speak, we have uh, inland surface water in total uh, reaching around 62,000 kilometers square. So we have large water bodies, inland water, water surface water bodies uh, that comprises of part of Lake Victoria. We have also Lake Tanganyika and we have Lake Nyasa among other minor water bodies. So inland water sources by itself makes around 62,000 kilometers square that is within the boundaries of the country. When you come to marine side, we have the area which is around 287,000 kilometers square, which makes a total area which we can fish through the Indian Ocean. And this comprises of the territorial sea area of around 64,000 kilometers, and the remaining is under exclusive economic zone of 223,000 kilometers. So we see by all means, we are surrounded with enough resource that we can use to improve productivity in fishing industry, especially through uh, financial inclusion assessment done is that the country can uh, have the potential of harvesting around 3.2 million metric tons of fish per annum. But as we speak, out of the potential of 3.2 million metric tons that can be harvested annually every year, we are now just harvesting around 497,000 metric tons. So we are far below the capability of making uh, use of the sources we have and the potential of uh, fish products that we have at our disposal. And the main uh, uh, reason as to why we didn't harness to the required level is actually, uh, as it has been presented earlier, that we have uh, uh, various challenges, especially to small scale fisher, fishermen who are uh, actually not uh, getting the right support from financiers, Sierra Dubi Bank inclusive. And among these challenges is uh, limited to access of floating feeds. Uh, that we do not have enough uh, source of feed supply for the fishermen to grow their uh, fishing activities. We have also limited quality and quantity of seed production because we have those who are fishing under special cages and the ethane ponds, but they miss the quality and quantity required for seed production so that they can increase their uh, yield and productivity. There is also the issue of low economy of the farmers, hence causing them to end up with less investment in whatever they are doing. And above all, there is also limitation in terms of knowledge of fishing pond management. The aquaculture technology is new in the area. So most of the anglers are just fishing uh, using the old models of fishing as a result of low uh, productivity. There is also the limitation in terms of limitation of access of power, especially the electricity power to the areas where the fish collections are made. And uh, there is also market competition 
due to high importation of fish. And under this, it is actually surprising us that we are still importing more than what we can actually uh, extract from our own resources. So we are competing with uh, we are competing with uh, those uh, imported fish, most of which are coming from abroad. And uh, the, the price for the imported uh, fish seems to be on the lower side than the locally uh, fish uh, uh, products. And we are also facing the uh, limitation in established market system that we are missing the integration of actors in the value chain. For small fish to pick and to produce more, there must be a proper linkage between uh, small-scale fishers and middle-scale uh, traders, and also uh, value addition in terms of fish processors. So there is uh, no clear link to the extent that these small-scale fishers, when they harvest whatever they get from the resources they have, they cannot uh, have direct market to sell their, uh, uh, their produce. And we are also seeing that the sector is facing limited storage facilities. So these storage facilities makes the means of collecting and aggregating the fish before the supplies are made to of checker to become a bit challenging. Now, what have we done so far as a bank to support the sector? We have seen that it is challenging to finance individual fishermen on individual merits. So we have proposed a model which is now uh, supporting the financing to small scale fishermen uh, from forming the association, the fishermen uh, associations. That as we have seen that traceability of ind individual fishermen is difficult, especially when you are giving them fishing gears, they can move from point A to B and C without the awareness of the, of the lender. And perhaps when the loan repayments are due, it is also difficult to trace and know with the whereabouts of it, the such individual fishermen. Now to cap this, we found that if we aggregate them into groups through the association, it becomes easier for the group management to, to sign the so-called personal guarantee and indemnity to indemnify these individual farmers to access the financing from the bank. And uh, also they are acting as a guarantee that, a group guarantee that in case anyone in the group is defaulting, then the group should take the responsibility to repay the outstanding loan balance. So by so doing, they have uh, helped us to make sure that uh, they, they onboard those trustworthy fishermen. And we have already started uh, giving uh, fishing gear, fishing boats, fishing engines, and the like to small scale fishermen who are under the associations. And we have done this both to the mainland Tanzania and as well as to the islets of Zanzibar. So group guarantee can work. Instead of financial institution to shy away from financing these small scale fishermen, we have to look on the way of de risking this sector while promoting them through proper linkage to actors in the respective value chain. The other thing that we are also used to using to de risk the uh, portfolio is through guarantee scheme that we have to support agricultural sector. Currently, we are working with various partners, which includes past trust. Past trust is a uh, private agricultural sector support. These are our partners who are offering uh, guarantee uh, facilities to cover the exposure for uh, borrowers in agricultural sectors who do not have adequate collateral cover. Apart from past trust, we are also working hand in hand with our Agricultural Development Bank, the Tanzanian Agricultural Development Bank, TADB. They're also having this uh, 
a window of guaranteeing small scale, smallholder farmers, small scale fishermen, and all investors in the agricultural value chain. So by so doing, we found that we can at least now start gifts without fearing much as it was before. So what is needed in the sector to promote small scale fishermen is to design a structured financing model that will support and mitigate the risks that banks see like they are uh, hindering them to give more financing in the sector. But as a country, we see that there is a lot of potential in terms of uh, fishing, uh, investment in fishing industry. We have the key investment areas in fishing, whereby we have a lot of resources in terms of water bodies we have, natural water bodies we have, and the government is now issuing a special, uh, 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 special uh, author authorization for those who are wants to invest in under cages. They use the legs which are already there to, pro to, to, to make and initiate cages along the leg shows. Similarly, we have uh, seen that if we link the uh, uh, actors in the value chain, the processors, the fish processors, and the supply of required uh, breeds of seeds, as well as the, uh, the, the feeding, we'll be able to increase the yield in terms of productivity for those, who, especially for those who are dealing with the aquaculture. Apart from that, we are seeing that the country is having few industries, few uh, uh, fish fillet processing industries. We have less than 10 industries, despite of all these uh, resources at our disposal. So we are promoting value addition to those meat and uh, large scale investors so that we can harness the potential we have at our disposal through both inland water sources as well as the marine uh, water bodies we have. And we see that this will help us given the support that we are having through the government, both governments of the revolutionary government of Zanzibar as well as the United Republic of Tanzania, they have special uh, uh, corporations dealing with the uh, uh, regulation of the fishing industry in the country. We have the Tanzania Fishing Corporation and we have the Zanzibar Fishing Corporation working hand in hand to promote investors in fishing industry. So we as a bank, our portfolio is actually on the lower side in terms of fishing to small uh, fishermen, but we have seen that by structuring this, putting these fishermen in groups, we can de-risk some of the risks that we have been seeing, like we cannot just go and support the sector. Now we have started and we see that they are now uh, utilizing our facilities and actually the production has now increased and they are now uh, uh, ready. They are now starting to repay their loans without much difficulties. So wherever there is a challenge, I, I, I can advise the financiers to look on the way, on the way we can structure the facilities rather than shying away. And this is what has happened even to insurance companies. We, as CRDB, we have the so-called CRDB insurance broker company. We have a dedicated subsidiary company dealing with uh, insurance service providers. All the insurance companies are supported, are supported by uh, aligning what we need to cover the risks that we see in agri sector, not only in fishing, but across all the agricultural sector. Now, what do we do? We are bringing all the insurance companies, designing the model of insuring our, 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 our financing, our financing risks. So we are still developing various insurance packages in agricultural sector. I know most of the insurance companies were very selective. They were not just going to the primary production site, like in fishing. They were just averting fishing 
and they can just start ensuring why the fish fillets is just already in the cold room and the like uh, value. So they were selecting. Now we want them to be uh, 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 covering the risks from end to end, from the primary production point until when the produce reaches to the final uh, consumer. So this is an going on uh, project and we are engaging all service providers we get in the country so that we can mitigate all the risks that we see uh, 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 facing our, our investors in agricultural sector, especially in fishing as well. So this is the move and we have already started. I see that uh, for those who are interested to come and make evaluation, Tanzania should be one of the countries to visit and see the potential so that we can join hands. At the time you want to invest, we will be ready to support you in terms of financial support, regardless of the, uh, the level of value chain that you wish to invest. But there is a lot of potential. We still need more investment in uh, a value addition. We still need for more investment in deep sea fishing. We still need more investment to even to support of small scale fishermen so that we can harness the potential that we have and change the trend. Instead of importing more what we are consuming, we should now produce surplus for exports. You cannot imagine the islands like those of, it, of Zanzibar, the hotels are fed by imported fish from abroad while the islands are surrounded by water. So this should be changed. And the government has seen this they are, they are now spearheading the blue economy concept by the support of all actors. We see that we can move forward and make sure that we harness the, uh, the resources that we have at our disposal. Thank you. And uh, maybe if there is a question, I'll be ready to answer and uh, respond back to any query that you might have at your end. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Marigesi and for sharing the, your insights. Uh, I also thank you for extending uh, that learning uh, opportunity. So for the other financiers who are here, I think you can, at least you can see uh, like what uh, Thomas was saying that the sector is not ignored. I'm glad we have members who are actually making efforts to, to venture and invest into the sector. So thank you so much, uh, Maregesi for your for your presentation. Uh, one thing I think I would like to let participants know is that uh, we have the case studies uh, written down. Uh, so you don't need to worry about the presentation from Marigesi, but the case study with even some numbers will be shared with you. So, so just be patient. Uh, I, I want to quickly move to the next presenter because we've lost quite a bit of time. I'm also glad to know that Suchitra has been able to connect. So Suchitra, just be on standby. Uh, we will bring you in. But sure. uh, I want to, to move to the next presenter uh, from uh, Natsev. Natsev, are you ready? I've seen several uh, faces from, from Natsev. Oh, I can see you're, you're very COVID compliant. Uh, the <laughs> we, we, we have been hit. We, we lost our colleague, Gilead. Some of you may remember him. He was a yes. center. Yeah, he, he left us in June. Oh, so that's, that's why that's you see it's a uh, strict compliance, <laughs> even when I'm alone in the office. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, good, good afternoon, I, I, bro. After afternoon. David, do you, yeah. have a presenta do you have a presentation or you're going to speak through your points? Uh, there is a presentation that will be made by, by my colleague, Justin. Right. Justin is our manager analytics. Okay. And, uh, he's ready to actually uh, do the presentation. And uh, without wasting time, I know we have very limited time. Um, I think I'll hand over to him, but he'll give an overview of the fishing sector in Zambia and uh, touch on the initiatives that we've made thus far in terms of reaching out to this sector, uh, talking about the products that we have available uh, for, for, for this sector, and also wrapping up with the strategies that we are putting in place uh, together with our partner, partners. 
uh, who you actually uh, uh, mentioned. So without further ado, Justin, please uh, uh, take it up. Thank, uh, thank you so much, um, David, and thank you, uh, John. Uh, I am going to take you through uh, through the presentation. Um, uh, let me share the screen so that we can all uh, we can all see. Um, I don't know whether we are able to see the screen. Uh, not yet, Justin. Okay, um, sorry, um, I don't have a video, but I'll just be able to uh, do this. Um, Which laptop are you using, David's or yours? My, my mine. Okay. I'm using my own screen. Uh, that's... Or maybe Justin, we can share from our end because we have it oh sure sure um yeah sure I think uh, uh, th easy. yeah thank you so much yeah so um uh as not so uh, I'll, I'll first talk about the uh, fishing sector in zambia uh that's the first slide um in zambia we we are endowed with a lot of water um we currently have about um 15 million hectares of, uh, of water uh, from rivers, lakes, and swamps. Uh, we have what we call the Congo Belt and then the Zambez Belt. Uh, we have a lot of rivers here where fishing is done. And it's, very, it's a very, very important sector to Zambia, the, uh, the fishing subsector. And at the moment, we have a dedicated ministry, which is called the Ministry of uh, Livestock and Fisheries uh, in the government, which looks at the the fisheries uh, sector and the industries. At the moment, uh, we have about 25,000 artisanal uh, fishers, and then there are about 300,000 uh, people who benefit directly or indirectly from the fishing uh, industry. These include the traders, processors, and middlemen. And we also have big uh, uh, fish fisheries, uh, some of which we are saving as not safe. Uh, these um, are commercial uh, entities which uh, are uh, operating in our lakes uh, and rivers. However, the, uh, despite uh, this, Zambia still uh, has, a, has, a, has a deficit in terms of fish production. We have about 50,000 tons of fish per year as, as a deficit. This is despite our uh, having a, too many, many lakes, rivers, and a lot of people in, involved. As a result, the country imports fish uh, from as far as China at the moment. Uh, maybe you can scroll to the next uh, slide. So as not safe, we have realized uh, the importance of this <clears throat> industry to economic development. <clears throat> and the, just to introduce our bank, we are a national bank, a uh, developmental financial institution, uh, owned by government. We, as you can see from the map, we are dotted throughout the country. And the, in the northern uh, areas, uh, we have a lot of rivers and lakes and most fishermen we are present. So in total, we have about 16 branches in areas where fishing is predominant. And we have realized that for us to be relevant to the people in these areas, we have to ensure that we provide services that are relevant to the, the activities they are doing. So we, we have realized also that the fishing industry, uh, I think the activities therefore in line with our vision. Our vision is that of providing financial inclusion. So we have realized that most of the fishers, especially the small scale fishers, do not have access to finance uh, at the moment. We have also realized that there are the financial interest levels are quite low. So we have come up with interventions to ensure that in line with our vision, we include most of uh, the fishers as well as uh, people who benefit directly or indirectly from this. On the next slide, please. Uh, we outline some of the initiatives that we, we have tried in the past, as well as the mechanisms that we have put in place 
to ensure that fishermen as well as other actors and players in the in the fishing industry benefit from our activities previously we partnered with the international labor organization they had a program called yapasa these targeted youths in the country uh, in agriculture as well as aquaculture so our, the idea was to come up with a value chain uh, to support soya bean production because we realized soya beans was uh, or is an ingredient in fish feed. So the idea was to support uh, the uh, feed production so that once the all value chain is organized, now we can supply the feed uh, at a reasonable price to the aquaculture entrepreneurs. So in this project, we financed uh, youths, uh, 100 hectares of soya bean production. And then we had a component of uh, fisher uh, processors uh, and the traders who, are, who we tasked to organize and come up with a, an outgrower mechanism. The idea was to ensure that they identify small scale fishers who could uh, produce fish and then supply to them and then the, the, the off-takers now could take the fish uh, elsewhere to go and sell. So this model worked. Uh, we were able to finance the soya bean pro producers. However, we had uh, challenges here and there to finance the, the, the aquaculture outgrower scheme, which was developed. Uh, I think the, during this period, there were so many issues we had the drought which uh, was as a, re as a result of the El Nino effect so uh, the, the production of soya bean was really really affected and the, that affected the, the model in, in some way however we were able to uh, learn a, a few lessons here and there in that farmers were identified were trained they opened savings account and most of them are still uh, saving with us then we uh, but resulting from the lessons that we learned, we came up with uh, mechanisms in place that we felt uh, could be applied to the aquaculture sector. And some of these, uh, the contract farming, uh, like the model which worked, we also identified that guarantee funding could work, uh, insurance mechanisms. Then uh, the most important was that we needed to have, um, to look at the full value chain uh, financing uh, and come up with mechanisms to ensure that uh, all actors are, are sorted in the sense that you find that maybe the off taker could have financial needs that may need to be addressed. Uh, the producer there, the farmer also have their unique financial needs that need to be uh, addressed. So what we, we, we came to learn uh, was that we needed to have, uh, to provide a suite of products to all actors at various stages of the food chain, of the value chain. The other aspect was the come up with collateral substitution mechanisms where, uh, for instance, those who are interested in getting uh, assets used in the, uh, in, the, in the aquaculture production to ensure that we, we relax some of the uh, collateral requirements uh, that, are, uh, that are needed. Next slide, uh, please. Then this, uh, we also, as NATSEP, have uh, realized that it's important that we work with fishers. Uh, like I ex explained earlier, uh, we want uh, to make sure that we deliver financial inclusion to uh, these people, majority of whom are currently excluded from former financial uh, mechanisms. Zambia's financial inclusion currently stands at 51%, uh, I mean 59%. And this is uh, when it comes to uh, small scale fishers, it's even worse. We, we are talking of about 80 to 100% of them excluded completely. So with our mandate of delivering financial institution, we have seen that it's um, really critical that we also include uh, these people uh, in, our, in our development uh, agenda. The other aspect is that we, we our initiatives are in line with most of our government programs. Uh, our country has a vision, which we call the uh, Vision 2030, uh, of ensuring that everyone is included. So this uh, makes uh, it necessary for us to ensure that we include them so that they can participate in the development of our country. 
So uh, in our initiatives, we have identified needs uh, that um, need to be fulfilled for these people to participate fully. And these include, uh, they need remittances, they need uh, access to mobile banking products, they need savings products for saving, uh, they, are, they need working capital loans, they need uh, asset loans, uh, and also financial education. We have realized that the financial levels, the financial literacy levels are quite low. So uh, these people need uh, to be taught or to be coached on some of the financial aspects uh, of the business, as well as how to utilize uh, loans when they are given. Once this is done, we have realized that I think um, can help a lot to ensure that more, more of these uh, small scale fishers are included. And we've come up with uh, solutions now to address these needs. And one of them is the financial education. Uh, we do this uh, before we uh, issue any loans, we ensure that they undergo some financial training uh, exercise so that they, they understand what is supposed to, uh, to happen. Others are coached sometimes just how to fill in a deposit slip, how to maybe use an ATM card. We ensure that we give these, uh, this, we give them this information so that um, they are able to concentrate on their production and uh, service their loans. And also have saving products uh, that are very, very good for them. We also have asset financing as well as um, working capital loans. Uh, next slide, please. So these are some of the available products that can uh, can be well, that they can access at the moment. Uh, and in the pictures here, we have outlined other other services that uh, uh, we we give uh, to small scale farmers and as well as small scale fishers. Um, on the savings aspects, we have what we call village banking products. Um, we encourage fishers to form groups and then open uh, uh, an account with the bank so that they can do their savings and shouts. But for an account called the rural account and the market account. The rural account is suitable for, um, for fishers. Uh, in the, uh, it has good features, um, suitable for the, or appropriate for the uh, fishermen. Then we have other services like mobile banking services that are attached to these. We have internet banking, insurance, bank assurance, as well as financial education mechanisms. On the credit, we have group loans, which use the uh, group guarantee mechanism. Uh, so farmers are grouped so that uh, the issue of collateral is substituted. We also offer working capital loans, as well as saving products. On the delivery channels, deliver all these products through branches. They were, like I said, we have 16 branches in, in areas that um, are close to the, our water bodies. We have ATMs, we have agents banking, mobile banking, and other, other digital uh, platforms that are coming up. Uh, next slide. Yeah, but uh, we do face challenges. Like I said, in our area interventions, when we tried to do this, we have uh, uh, we did face quite a number of challenges. The first one is lack of data on production of financial statistics. So we face a lot of dat uh, data challenges uh, on say financial re uh, reports, issues to do with war farm budgets, enterprise budgets. Uh, we found that farmers are unable to provide these, and as a result, um, information uh, is, is quite scarce. Then low financial interest levels, I mentioned this, you find that uh, our, our fishermen uh, do, don't really have the, it's a challenge actually uh, to grasp some of the financial concepts. Then the savings cut as well, uh, we are trying to ensure that we provide uh, information so that um, uh, this can be motivated uh, to, to, to start saving. Then the other one is long distances to banks, uh, uh, these mostly the fish, fishing villages are located in remote areas uh, far away from uh, financial institutions. So it makes it uh, expensive sometimes to do the monitoring and everything. Then the savings catch as well, as, as well as the loan repayment catch, we find it uh, challenging. Uh, in most areas, um, there are people need to be educated on the 
to ensure that the savings culture is improved. On the impacts of activities, uh, we, we see increased production and in fish, um, as well as uh, enhanced livelihoods. If people can be given loans to implement their aquaculture project, uh, we expect increased uh, fish production, which will result in other benefits, health benefits like um, enhanced livelihoods, uh, there was also women uh, empowerment involved. A majority of the traders, actually, those who do trading in fish in Zambia, are women. So if the value chain is well um, financed, we expect a lot of women to benefit from these initiatives. The other aspect is the reduced vulnerability. Uh, as they are, if they are trained, well trained in financial education, uh, they become uh, more resilient and less vulnerable to financial shocks uh, whenever they, they arise. In terms of uh, future strategies, we are trying to ensure that we establish uh, strategic partners as well as funding models. So we are working with uh, quite a number of partners to ensure that um, most of the challenges we are facing, uh, we, we come up we come together and uh, come up with ways of trying to address most of the, these challenges that are hindering our our, our ability to provide uh, well-priced financial services to the, the fisher. The next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of um, partners, uh, we. We are actually uh, currently working with a number of partners in the country. Some of these, are, number one is wild fish in Zambia, where we are trying to uh, ride on their, their activities and see how best we can offer uh, reasonably priced financial services to farmers. Others include the World Food Program, Czech Caritas, Zambia. Uh, we have uh, GIZ, uh, World Savings Bank Institute, uh, World uh, Bank Foundation for International Cooperation, as well as the accelerated growth uh, for SMEs. So what we are trying to do is um, make sure that we understand their programs, uh, come together. Uh, most of these are already on the ground. Uh, we, sometimes we have challenges here and there in terms of expertise. So we ask sometimes for technical assistance from uh, experts, from their experts on the ground to help us understand certain aspects of the of the sector, and at the moment the bank is also still open to other other interventions or other partnerships or other organisations that may be interested in uplifting the plight of uh, small scale uh, fishermen in Zambia. I think that's we, where we end our presentation. Thank you very much. Unless there are any any questions, thank you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Justin um, and David, uh, for for your for your presentation, short and concise. Thank you so much, um, David. I is one of your partners who is who has joined us. Uh, I know Catherine is 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 within. I just wanted to maybe just hear from one of your partners, and that's Catherine from Wildfish. Um, maybe come. I saw you oh, earlier okay. this morning, Catherine Mwema. Yes, uh, John, Catherine, thank you, you so much. Uh, yes, um, on. I hope you can hear me. I hope I'm loud enough. Yes, Catherine, you're, yes, you're loud in. You're loud enough. I, I just uh, we just wanted to to actually just dig in into your relationship. Uh, with not safe. What what are you supporting them with, you know, and what's the what's the nature of your relationship with them? Okay, um, I can really say our relationship is quite symbiotic. Um, NatSave has been supporting us a lot uh, with the programs that we have. Just to mention a few, the first being an a program that aims to build the entrepreneurial capacity of students. So uh, just um, being able to guide them on uh, saving culture and even uh, opportunities for financing. And we are hoping that they could be able to finance some of our startup students. 
um, yeah, those will come with good business plan. And also this is um, something that they're going to really support indeed to be able to build in the business skills uh, within the students. And again, uh, we have a program uh, on farmers uh, that uh, NASEV has come up on board and we are hoping that we are going to be able to identify some uh, farmers and not just farmers, but other value chain actors, especially uh, feed businesses and feed hatchery businesses that they can support uh, with savings and also credit and maybe other um, business skills and uh, financial literacy. Yeah, and uh, quite a number of things uh, that we are working with NATSEV, uh, supporting other entrepreneurs um, in climate resilience and all these as a world fish, we are strategic in that we, are, we work with different value chain actors in the, in the sector. And uh, we are able to bring these on board and we can uh, link up with NATSEV quite easily and identify investment opportunities. Uh, so benefiting um, our um, mission to help the sector and also for them the commercial um, benefits. So uh, that is in line with the uh, collaboration, but also I believe as well fish, we, we are able to give the technical um, information about the sector, especially uh, um, like um, Mr. Essel just mentioned that uh, sometimes there's no information on the business viability, there's no uh, research information on how much on risk factors. And these are some of the aspects we aim to work on Wildfish and uh, um, the work is actually ongoing to be able to give them the information and tell them, okay, look here, this is what uh, is at stake. Uh, this is what you can make and even aid in de-risking the sector. So as researchers, we are working uh, to be able to bring this information on board and uh, help NATSEV and other in financial institutions clearly understand the sector, because this is a big challenge. Uh, most people just assume it's too risky, but uh, with more information uh, from technical side, uh, Wildfish and other partners, you can be able to bring on information on board so that it can be easily understood that the sector is maybe not as risky as thought and the opportunities that are available. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Catherine. At least now we have an understanding of uh, the kind of work that you do with them. And I think your role is, is very important. There's, yeah, you can't just say that the sector is risky without trying <laughs> or without having evidence. I'm glad that you're able to add that gap and give them evidence, you know, that, you know, this sector can be you know, de-risked and, you know, they can invest in. So thank you so much. I know we are really not doing well with time. So I want to quickly jump to the next presenter, uh, who is uh, my good friend, Maman. Maman Lawal, all the way from Niger, Bagri. I think I saw Maman. Maman, are you ready? I want to hand over to you. Oui, um, bonjour, uh, John. Bonjour, um, Maman. Comment vous allez? Hand like, OK. Donc, je vais laisser monsieur, le directeur du crédit agricole qui est avec nous présenter un peu ce que nous faisons dans le secteur piscicole. Euh, monsieur Barazé, s'il m'écoute, il peut, il peut prendre la parole. Monsieur Barazé? Maman is Barazé Nia. Monsieur Barazé. Oui, Monsieur John, il est en train de faire le nécessaire. Merci.
juste quelques copies, euh, soucis de connexion. Le Niger, c'est un pays un peu, un peu loin. Quelques soucis de connexion. Okay. My man is uh, Monsieur Barazé uh, making a presentation or he's going to talk? Il va parler en fait, il va, on a déjà envoyé quelque chose pour expliquer notre uh, politique à Africa. Je ne sais pas, de mon point de vue, il doit juste expliquer ce qu'on fait euh, ici à Bagri et quel projet psychologique nous avons mis en œuvre, les difficultés également. Ok, great. Bon, ben, euh, comme je connais un peu avec votre autorisation, je peux commencer par introduire le temps qu'il qu prenne la parole. On va gagner une ou deux minutes. Ok. Tout à fait. Ah. Oui, bonjour mesdames et messieurs. Euh, C'est un honneur pour la Banque agricole du Niger de participer à cette conférence de haut niveau. Nous avons, nous présentons nos excuses parce que j'avais confié le dossier au directeur du crédit agricole qui devrait normalement faire la présentation. Malheureusement, il a quelques soucis techniques puisqu'il est dans son bureau. Alors, qu'est-ce que nous devons dire? Nous, nous avons, le Niger est un pays enclavé qui, malheureusement, n'a pas beaucoup d'accès sur le littoral euh, et sur la mer. Donc, euh, nous avons des ressources halieutiques qui sont relativement limitées. On a un seul fleuve permanent qui traverse euh, le Niger sur à peu près 500 km. Les autres sont de nappes qui sont semi-permanentes des lacs et des mares. Donc, il est important que pour euh, euh, lutter contre l'insécurité alimentaire, donner des pouvoirs euh, et des revenus à nos, à nos 20 populations rurales, de promouvoir plutôt euh, euh, la pêche, disons la pisciculture, aider les gens à apprendre à, à produire du poisson sur, pendant toute la période de, de l'année pour éviter justement d'importer. Parce que l'importation a un coût, vous savez, économique en termes de fuite de devises. Et donc, l'importation a également un coût en termes de... de, 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 en termes de allô? OK. Mais essaie de te connecter. Si tu donc, ça a un coût en termes de de manque à gagner, de valeur ajoutée qu'on a perdu et surtout en termes d'emploi de, euh, et de pauvreté. Donc, c'est que nous, depuis notre création à la Banque agricole du Niger, le volet euh, pisciculture, appui à la pisciculture est un volet important. Un volet important, mais comme il a été dit par les différents prédécesseurs, il faut avoir des outils et des mécanismes adaptés afin de... de d'adresser ce risque. Nous, nous n'avons pas fait le choix de dire c'est risqué, on n'intervient pas. Mais nous avons fait le choix de regarder globalement euh, qu'est-ce qui fait que le secteur est risqué, qu'est-ce qui fait que nous n'avons pas, nous ne pouvons pas intervenir euh, de façon euh, sécurisée. La première approche, c'est de faire une analyse euh, entre depuis en aval de toute la chaîne de valeur en disant euh, euh, si je dois produire euh, des poissons, il faut que je m'interroge sur la nature. Qu'est-ce qui est euh, le plus résistant? Qu'est-ce que, qui est prisé sur le marché local? Qu'est-ce que j'ai la technicité? Qu'est-ce qui, qu qui ne répond pas à, aux problèmes phytosanitaires avec une forte mortalité? Je prends un exemple. Euh, nous sommes des riverains du fleuve. Donc, nous, le, le, le capitaine est très prisé. Par contre, techniquement, pour élever du capitaine, c'est très, très difficile, malgré qu'on ait des techniciens à la matière chevronnée. Donc, le choix de type de poisson est essentiel pour éliminer le risque. Ça, c'est le premier. Le second, c'est 
sur euh, la confection et l'entretien des étangs. Il faut qu'on puisse euh, trouver des gens qui sont en amont, qui savent comment faire euh, avec euh, euh, des étangs qui sont sécurisés, qui ne qui sont pas susceptibles d'amener de, de, certaines défaillances en termes de mortalité, etc. Donc, c'est la formation d'abord de, de, de ceux qui vont faire les états. La deuxième chose, la troisième chose, je m'excuse, c'est l'alimentation. Il faut soit euh, sécuriser la chaîne d'approvisionnement à alimentation parce que nous, dans nos petits comptes d'exploitation, l'un des poids les plus lourds, c'est justement l'importation ou la fabrication du produit, euh, en, des produits, euh, en des al, de l'aliment poisson. Donc, et nous avons, et à, à cet effet, on sait un peu, euh, avec la direction, avec la, le groupement des pisciculteurs du Niger, on a, on a essayé de, de faire une formation et de sécuriser l'approvisionnement en termes d'aliments poisson. Et en termes d'aliments poisson, on a, on a sécurisé ça. Donc, euh, le temps que M. Monsieur, monsieur, euh, Paraz prenne le relais, voilà à peu près les différentes analyses qu'on a fait nous, dans le cadre de, de la promotion de la sec, du secteur piscicole, en disant voilà les, les entraves. Une fois que c'est fait, il faut qu'on s'assure que la formation des, des pisciculteurs en, 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 en disant combien de temps nous pouvons, nous pouvons euh, euh, produire. Parce que malheureusement, si on, on ne respecte pas les itinéraires techniques, on, au lieu d'avoir des allévins à la forme commerciale, en quatre ou cinq mois, parfois on part à sept, huit, neuf mois, ce qui fait, qui allonge les délais et qui met les surcoûts. Donc, euh, l'aspect Banque agricole du Niger, c'est d'identifier bien les risques, de, de s'assurer que derrière, il y a quelqu'un qui adresse le risque et nous, nous accompagnons une fois que euh, ces différents risques ont été identifiés, les différents acteurs ont été formés et les différents schémas d'intervention ont été validés par des gens qui ont la technicité et qui ont été formés pour. Et une fois que tout ceci est là, nous nous pouvons accompagner par des financements adaptés, soit... Allô Oui, laisse-moi terminer, s'il vous plaît. Donc, voilà comment euh, la Banque agricole du Niger a, a conçu son approche financement pisciculture en identifiant les entraves et en proposant, de, en proposant des solutions. Nous avons dans notre document, malheureusement, qui n'est pas partagé, quelques exemples où nous avons des promoteurs qui sont devenus actuellement des vrais producteurs du poisson en produisant peut-être pas l'espèce qui est la plus recherchée et la plus critée, mais en produisant quelque chose qui est viable économiquement, qui est viable financièrement. C'est ça, M. Jean, en disant, l'expérience de Bagri, c'est de pas, de ne pas dire qu'on ne peut pas, mais de prendre le temps d'adresser les différents risques, de dérisquer le système et de, de faire aboutir euh, quelques... quelques promoteurs individuellement en masse, que ce soit en coopérative ou de façon euh, individuelle. Et la clé dans ça, c'est de discuter avec les opérateurs du système. Donc, la, la, la coopérative des piscicoles du Niger qui, qui ont fait un dialogue ouvert. Ils ont un groupe WhatsApp à laquelle nous nous appartenons et nous échangeons chaque fois sur ce qui est de la formation de, du marché euh, de la construction des états, etc. Si monsieur, j'arrive à avoir les chiffres, monsieur Jean, je pourrais vous exposer. Malheureusement, comme j'ai dit, la présentation est de l'autre côté et il n'arrive pas à se connecter. Euh, je vous présente toutes nos excuses, mais voilà un peu l'approche de la Banque agricole du Niger qui, depuis dix ans, a fait de la pisciculture un moyen de lutter contre l'importation, mais aussi d'augmenter les revenus des, des, des riverains du fleuve. Je vous remercie. S'il y a des questions, je suis prêt à à répondre. Merci. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, uh, Maman. Uh, thank you for sharing your, your insights.
I'm glad you managed to come in, even with the challenges uh, your colleague uh, was facing. So, but thank you so much. Uh, to the rest of the participants, uh, like I said earlier, that all these cases, we have them written. So we'll be able to share them with you um, after the, this validation. Remember, this is a validation exercise. So we also want to check, you know, whether some of that information is, is true or is consistent uh, with, uh, with, with the institutions that contributed. So without further ado, I know, again, I'll mention the time issue, but I would like to quickly, again, uh, go to the next presenter, who is Suchitra. Uh, she's been trying so hard to join us, but uh, finally, I think she's managed to, uh, to connect. Uh, so, Suchitra, I hope you're ready now. Uh, yes. Good. Yes, sir. Good. I, I can hear you very clearly. I'm re really happy to hear your voice. And also for making time to join, I know the time there uh, it could be a bit late, but you look very fresh. You, know, it's almost, it, you look fresher than most of us, uh, but uh, good to see you and uh, you can take off, Sujitra. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm just keeping the video off so that there's no more uh, this. Um, so I'm very sorry uh, and my apologies to everyone for joining in so late due to some technical issues that were going on. So good afternoon, um, Africa. And uh, I would like, to, on behalf of the CAFE SSF Secretariat, I would like to thank Africa Secretariat for organizing this joint uh, webinar. And uh, I would like to uh, quickly give an overview and begin this presentation by giving a, a short brief about this network to all the participants who may not have been a part of the stakeholder discussion meetings uh, during the last year when we were uh, when we had been uh, organizing the uh, CAFE SSF network uh, meetings, both for East Africa as well as uh, West Africa, when we were conceptualizing it and also taking uh, suggestions from uh, various stakeholders from within your region. So uh, going ahead with, I would just like to tell you all the, uh, for all those who are who have joined new um, for this uh, webinar, the mission and vision of the network is, uh, it aims to facilitate the availability and increase access to finance and insurance for small scale fishers uh, by strengthening the capacity building of financial service providers and fisher folk organizations. The, our network's alignment uh, directly contributes to a few of the international uh, principles and guidelines. Uh, primarily among them is FAO's Code of Conduct of, for Responsible Fisheries. Uh, the other one is the Voluntary Guidelines for Securing Sustainable Small-Scale Fisheries in Context of Food Security and Poverty Eradication which uh, is commonly referred to and as some of you all may be aware of is, uh, is called the small scale fisheries guidelines. The other uh, alignment of our network is uh, based on the FAO guidelines for increasing access of small scale fisheries to credit and insurance services. Based, this is also where the genesis of the CAFI SSF network has happened and we are working in alignment to these guidelines. And the other international principle uh, that we follow, and it is aligned to the networks, is the principle for investment in sustainable wild caught fisheries, principles of sustainable finance, and principles for responsible investment in agriculture and food. So uh, other than that, as you can see, uh, next slide, please. The network also aims to support the integrated and economic development Sorry, the previous slide, previous slide, Nestor. Okay, yeah. The network also aims to support integrated and economic, uh, sorry, uh, the slide before this, Nestor. Okay, yes. The network aims to support the integrated and economic development and also further contributes to the achievement of the United Nations 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, as you can see, the SDG clearly recognizes how access to fisheries resources 
and support to small scale fishers are important to the poverty eradication, food security, improved nutrition, economic security and access to the financial services. Primarily, uh, the SDG, uh, the goal number 14, which is their life below water, that is where the network's alignment is focused on, as uh, the goal number 14B target states that it provide uh, to provide access for small-scale artisanal fishers to marine resources and markets. Uh, it further also aligns it with the other goals, that is the goal, num goal one, to end poverty, uh, particularly for small scale fishers who are vulnerable and marginalized. Uh, the other goal is to end hunger, achieve food security and improve uh, nutrition. Also, it aligns it to goal number eight, that is to promote inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment and decent work for all. And goal number 12, that is ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. To further uh, uh, tell you all the objective of our network is to increase global attention and awareness amongst the financial service providers to support the SSF sector. It also provides the, the support to design and develop a development of training materials and user-friendly financial tools that may support the sector and communities. The network also provides advisory services to uh, concerned and interested stakeholders in the financial service sector. And the other is the last and final one is to emphasize and promote partnerships and joint initiatives, which I've been hearing during the case studies, uh, which um, our stakeholders presented that how partnerships they are also looking for and joint initiatives. So the network is also trying to facilitate these kinds of partnerships across various regions. Next, um, next slide. Um, okay. So uh, take, taking into consideration the uh, global employment statistics based on the FAO's uh, uh, State of World Fisheries and Aquaculture uh, document that was released last year, we have about 59 million uh, people that are working in the primary sector that includes both fisheries and aquaculture. Of this, if you see 39 million are engaged directly in the fisheries uh, uh, activities, whereas 20.5 million are engaged in the aquaculture. Uh, coming to the Africa region uh, statistics, Africa region, as you can see, constitutes about 9% of the fisheries and aquaculture workers that are engaged in the primary sector and is the highest uh, and has the second highest congregation of fish workers in the world. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see, uh, about uh, Africa has about more than 5.4 million fish workers that are engaged in the uh, fisheries sector, that is uh, both the uh, when I say fisheries sector, it is capture fisheries that includes both inland fisheries as well as marine capture fisheries. And it has about 0.3 million um, uh, people, uh, fish workers, which are employed directly in the aquaculture sector. Coming further to, uh, if you see West Africa region alone by itself, constitutes about 3 million full-time workers that are predominantly employed in the small scale fisheries sector. And the role of women cannot be underestimated in Africa region as about more than 50% uh, uh, of women are employed in the post-harvest uh, fisheries value chain activities. Um, the other thing which I, I also I would like to share is uh, Africa region contributes about 25% of the inland capture fishery production to the global share. And it is uh, worth mentioning here, uh, this is also based on FAO's uh, State of World Aquaculture Fisheries data, uh, recent data that was shared and that was uh, published in 2020. It states that around 11 African countries are amongst the top 25 inland capture fisheries producers. And I would like to mention of those top 20 of this top 11, of this 11 um, uh, producers that are uh, from Africa, uh, in the top 10 producers, we have Uganda, Nigeria, and United Republic of Tanzania, which are, uh, as I said, amongst the top 10 producers. Can we move to the next slide? Uh, 
Can you go on slide number six, Nestor? Yeah, just keep clicking. Yeah, that's the one. So, um, okay. So, in order to encourage um, the, it's it's the aim of the uh, Kefi SSF network and uh, also FAO that uh, through this network we would like to encourage the financial service providers to come forward and address the financing gaps in the uh, small scale fisheries sector. The network uh, provides the support to the FSPs in understanding the unique business characteristics of the uh, sector. And as I heard some time back, also as um, uh, the lady from World Fish, Catherine was talking about that they provide technical support uh, to institutions to say that this is Yes, it's a risky sector, but it can be de-risk. De Similarly, Cafe SSF network is also, uh, in its endeavor is also and embarking and facilitating to uh, have a dialogue uh, with various financial institutions to ensure that uh, there is support and by, under, by helping us, uh, helping them understand the business characteristics of this sector, uh, financial institutions can uh, serve the sector in a much better way and have a customized and tailor-made uh, suit of services and products specialized for this uh, fishery sector and particularly for, particularly for the small-scale fishery sector. And as you can see over here in this chart, uh, uh, FAO has already identified and documented the potential credit needs of SSF, uh, uh, particularly the fishers, both from the business uh, point of view, the business loans, as well as the consumption needs, which serves the life cycle needs of the fishers. Because it is often seen that when uh, financing is provided, and this has been the concern of a lot of uh, financial institutions across the globe, and I'm sure it would be uh, relevant to also African, when uh, loans are provided for business activities, particularly the marginal and vulner vulnerable segment, uh, at least a portion of it or a substantial portion sometimes goes for the consumption loans. So uh, it's important. And I also saw in some of the presentations how se different credit needs are being addressed. And um, through this chart, we have tried to particularly uh, categorize the various um, potential uh, credit needs and uh, crystallize it, as you can see, right from uh, from marine fisheries sector, which are the various uh, um, needs or business loans that can be materialized and uh, devised by and rolled out. The products can be rolled out by the financial institutions. Also for the aquaculture sector, we have tried to um, put in as much as we can, right from pond construction for infrastructure development to the feed seed input, as well as the recurring costs for fuels, repair and maintenance of uh, engines and uh, vessel crafts and gears also. So similarly for uh, coastal aquaculture activities also, there is a lot of activities and interventions have already been identified. This could change region wise uh, from you know, what is relevant to Africa or Asia region. Uh, this can increase or decrease depending on the natural resources and the species availability in the coastal uh, areas. Then further, as you can see under the post harvest value added product preparation also, uh, FAO has tried to identify these kinds of various interventions, thus providing good scope for uh, the financial service providers to understand the potential interventions for the sector. Also for marketing support also that has been identified. And this has also been documented in some of the brochures of FAO, which is there. Um, next slide, please. So I would just quickly like to uh, show on the different, uh, I, I spoke about the uh, Africa's potential for small scale fisheries. And uh, also I would like to touch upon quickly on the opportunities for the small scale uh, fish, uh, fisheries finance services. So other than the capture fisheries, uh, the upcoming opportunities also, and which has been uh, underutilized or underdeveloped in the Africa region, is the aquaculture because there is immense small uh, small holding uh, on small ponds uh, which are there which can be uh, converted or community tanks which are there which can be converted for aquaculture uh, uh, species growing so this is one of the uh, 
relevant and valid opportunities for uh, financial institutions in the region, which also helps them to diversify their um, agribusiness and fisheries portfolio, other, along with the other uh, business interventions uh, under this uh, marine as well as inland capture fisheries that they have. So uh, the network's aim in, in the Africa region is to ensure that financial service institutions do uh, carry out an inclusive financial services uh, for particularly the unlocking the potential of the small scale fisheries and aquaculture sector, uh, and not to uh, undermine the role of uh, women also who are actively engaged in the fisheries value chain activities. So specialized products can also be developed for uh, the women uh, for the gender uh, which is there, which is actively participating in the sector. Uh, next slide, please. Also, I would like to uh, give a quick overview uh, to, to the financial service uh, stakeholders who are present over here. Um, although it's not absolutely Africa, but it is a more of a worldwide uh, perspective that we just want to bring in uh, scope. Because uh, looking at the st state of microfinance sector, it came, uh, as you can see, microfinance worldwide has serviced more than 140 million uh, borrowers with a loan portfolio of USD 124. And uh, as the, just as the fisheries and particularly small scale fisheries, as you say, uh, is dominated by Asia, but the second domination is by Africa region. So as it goes uh, from the borrower base also, South Asia particularly dominates the global microfinance portfolio. But uh, the sub-Saharan region also has a substantial contribution and uh, about its loan outstanding, at least for the year 2019, based on the convergence and mixed market data that we have, stands at 10.3 billion. And this is what is, which has been recorded, I would say. And there's a substantial data that may not have been recorded and that may have been missed out. So this is the overall figure, which is there. And if you can see the microfinance portfolio region-wise, when we try to look into that data, uh, we could find data on agriculture sector or other forestry sectors. But when it comes to reporting the fisheries or even small scale, uh, small, small scale fisheries sector, there wasn't much information so this is also where a lot of uh, unreported data is. So a lot of data is being missed out. But it is assumed that at least region-wise, uh, there is at least 5 to 10% of you know, small-scale fisheries portfolio, which the uh, MFIs, um, the financial institution through the MFI partners are at least are covering it in their portfolio. So. Um, Without taking much of the time, I know John has been saying every now and then we are running, uh, not doing so good on time. So I would just like to uh, share this slide with you all and which talks about the CAFE network, uh, CAFE SSF networks uh, support areas for the interested current members and the uh, potentially interested members. We try to cover all the aspects of the project cycle. And as you can see right from the situation analysis, any support that is required, uh, CAFE uh, network stands to support the uh, member institutions, even if it includes uh, having a dialogue with the uh, governments or, or regulatory bodies uh, for ensuring policy changes so that uh, more of fisheries and small scale fisheries also can be included in the policies of the country. Uh, so this is where, uh, uh, as you can see, the, the broad uh, areas of work, which CAFE SSF network has been doing. And uh, I would also like to mention uh, in this, under this Africa FAO LOA, which, were, which, we, are being, which we are discussing. So the CAFE SSF network has all, also provided support to um, the, um, participant uh, institutions who presented the case studies today to document and also to Africa to help document the case studies. Uh, and of course that would be shared to a larger uh, audience and all the Africa members. So, so based on this, uh, I would just like to quickly mention, next slide please. Uh, for all those uh, people uh, and stakeholders who are present here, we 
who are still not our members, we would uh, be interested to invite you all to be a member of FESSF network and share your knowledge, experience, or any other support that you may uh, need uh, from within the network. We also have a set of a uh, lot of experts within uh, and organizations which would be uh, happy to kind of share their experiences and any support that may, may be required. So any, for any further uh, information, you can write to me uh, at this address, or you can also uh, write to uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Raymond uh, Van Andrew, who is the FAO focal point on fisheries credit and insurance. So thank you. Thank you, Suchitra. Uh, thank you for, um, for, for your presentation. You know, I always get excited when I hear about this, this network. Uh, because it just, for me, I see it as a platform where we can all leverage, uh, leverage on. Um, I see quite a number of hands. Um, and and uh, yeah, I will encourage a bit of Q&A right now, just to take a, you know, to take a breather and a pause and to digest all the information that we have, uh, we have acquired in the past, I can say two hours. So, uh, Basically, I think before we move to the next session, I would just like to urge the participants to stay put. We still I I have one a very important presentation. Um, it's a presentation by a gentleman called Mr. Pierre Waku, uh, who is going to present on a, another project uh, called Fish for ACP, which is more of an extension of, of what we have done. Uh, so please uh, stay put, but right now I would like to open the floor uh, for discussions. Uh, I would like to be very diplomatic because I saw some hands. Uh, so maybe I will start with uh, Alion, Alui, Alion, if I pronounce that name uh, well. Uh, the Q&A is for all the speakers uh, who have presented so far. So it's, it's, a, it's an open session. Uh, so please, your comments, views, questions are highly welcome at this point. So we can start with Alun. Alun, are you there? Or you raised your hand by mistake? If Alun is not there, um, David, I saw a hand from you as well. Bobby. Okay. Mm. Yes, Abdul. Morning, DJ. Can I call? Yes. Can I speak? <laughs> Go, ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> On this way, I think that we must. Um... Oh. Yeah, Abdul, you can speak in French as well. Okay. Uh -huh. Oui, ma pensée est la suivante. Ce que nous devrions normalement réfléchir dans le sens de comment inclure effectivement ces différentes entités avec lesquelles nous travaillons, qui sont euh, dans le sens de l'élevage ou de la pisciculture et qui vont dans le sens de euh, l'inhibition de notre insécurité alimentaire. Aujourd'hui, si nos communautés effectivement sont enclines, à des insécurités et c'est parce qu'elles sont assez jeunes qu'il faille prendre en compte effectivement cette composante par rapport à la démographie et aux dividendes démographiques. Suite à cela aussi, faire en sorte que nous puissions les employer dans l'employment, dans l'élevage, ok, par rapport à ce que nous avons comme potentiel d'eau, qu'elle soit souterraine qu'elle soit de surface, qu'elle soit effectivement pluviale, mais qu'elle puisse effectivement nous permettre d'employer cette jeunesse. Et je pense que c'est par rapport à cela que nous allions devoir euh, euh, développer la mise en œuvre ou plutôt le développement de nos approches. Cependant, chacun avec son avantage comparatif. L'aquaculture n'est pas effectivement un avantage comparatif qui est donné à toute l'Afrique. 
certaines zones en ont ou ont des potentialités de pouvoir le faire, mais pas toutes. Je vous remercie. Thank you so much, uh, Abdul, uh, for raising those issues. I, you can see how there's still more work to be done in the continent. Uh, but I'm, I, I welcome your sentiments in terms of more collaboration, you know, in the, in the sector. So thank you very much. And also the, your point on, on involving the youth. And I'm glad that uh, some of the speakers uh, who spoke earlier, you know, raised some elements of engaging or involving the youth uh, in the fisheries work, because I think there's a wealth of potential uh, in, in involving the youth in, in the fisheries activities. Uh, any other comment or question? I can also read a comment from the chat by Sam or Chieng. Sam, I think you are reacting to Marigesi's uh, presentation, uh, where you say that it still boils back to the need to have organized groups as was containing the report. Even guarantee uh, that Marigesi was talking about can only be possible with organized groups. Yes, I think that is a, an interesting observation. So our fishers, we need to be organized if we need to extend financing to them. One of the challenges we faced, I think, uh, when we started this uh, process was also just to to understand who is this small scale fisher uh, that we want to support. You know, they, we all come from different regions and, and countries and, and, um, and how you see the small scale fisher in, in your country could be different uh, to how another country uh, sees them. Can I speak again? Yes. Abdul, you wanted to talk? Yes, for this. Okay. If it's possible in my meaning. Go ahead. We, don't, we must don't stay and um, wait from another thing from another way. We must grow up our model in our um, reality with our um, empowerment. What are we going to do on this? This one is for us. Okay, on this way, we can't grow up when you want to go. I'm trying to speak in English eh, for that. Mr. John? Done? Thank you. I also okay. see mm -hmm. for that and need something other else from another person which can bring to add it um, with our apport. Par rapport à cela, si on peut effectivement développer nous la mobilisation à l'interne pour la mettre en œuvre, de sorte à ce que nous puissions euh, capter les ressources au niveau de l'international qui puissent être additives, qu'elles puissent s'associer aux nôtres pour pouvoir aller, ça serait bien. On ne va pas aller effectivement toujours dans le sens de tendre la main. Le monde entier a des difficultés. Cependant, nous, au niveau de l'Afrique, il faudrait que nous puissions quand même être en mesure de prendre en compte nos difficultés, les analyser, les quantifier par rapport à cela. Voici ce que nous nous mettons dans la cagnotte, voici ce que les autres vont mettre et voici ce que le secteur privé pourrait mettre aussi en marche pour que nous puissions développer les PPP, si possibilité il y a. Excuse me, <laughs> je suis Thank plus you, tranquille en um... Maybe I can summarize what you've said. Um, I had a lot, uh, you talking a lot about uh, resource mobilization uh, and fundraising. Uh, how can external support come in uh, to, to catalyze the on, uh, ongoing efforts? 
Uh, I think probably these are questions to Chitra you may want to respond to, or Raymond or, or Thomas, who is there. And uh, maybe Suchitra, you, you can, because uh, I'm wondering, uh, would this be um, an objective of CAFI SSF? Because I know our financial institutions will be keen uh, to get this kind of support. It's a sector that many, many financial institutions have not ventured. So I think there would be some, you know, I think uh, the expectation is maybe some funding that can help to pilot you know, some of these uh, credit interventions into the sector. You can respond to that later because I see another hand uh, okay. from Mr. Abilio Manuel. Abilio, you can go ahead. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. Uh, yes, uh, Abilio Manuel from Mozambique. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, for all the presenters with a good insight. Uh, my questions uh, come from the first uh, uh, the first presentation. Uh, I saw from the presentation that the private sector are very weak, engaged to, to the to financing, to funding the uh, fish, fishing uh, sector. So, uh, and I saw that the government agency and the other, other uh, actors uh, on that are active. Uh, my question is uh, how to, 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 to motivate, how government can motivate the uh, private sector to, to uh, uh, incentive the mm. private sector uh, funding the sector. Mm. Uh, the second uh, question comes from um, uh, the presentation of uh, Zambia, when he mentioned about Prince. when he mentioned about a uh, collateral substitution mechanism, uh, I would like to to well understanding uh, how this kind of mechanism. Uh, function because uh, this is a cross uh, uh, challenge. Uh, I mean, it's raised from all agriculture sector, the collateral problem. So okay. I would like to well understand how this mechanism uh, function uh, because this is our also challenge uh, our small scale producer uh, from uh, uh, agriculture and even from uh, fishers uh, have this kind of problem collateral to 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 get a credit in a financial institution. So okay. this is my uh, uh, questions. I uh, raise it from presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Abilio. Uh, your question is, I know, directed to two presenters. Uh, I know the, the first question is more or less directed to Thomas, yes. because uh, you're responding to uh, the finding on how can government uh, incentivize the private sector. Uh, Thomas, I don't know if you have any, any response at the moment, but I, yeah. that's a question that was directed to you. Yeah. Uh, you want to go? Yeah. OK. Uh, I'll give a quick response. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Abilio, for, for, for your question. The, the, we, we were saying the private sector is weak in terms of their willingness to support the sector. Or in other words, I would say they are limited in that sector because of the risks that they find with uh, microfinance institutions 
the fishes, they don't want to go in there. So they are, their contribution there is limited. So now comes the question. So how can they be incentivized to support this thing? And you mentioned government. Yes, government has a key role. Uh, it is the responsibility of government always to promote an environment that will help the private sector to grow. Uh, we're doing some work currently in Kenya, and we realize that along the beach, uh, the government is promoting what we call uh, beach management units. How must people manage their fishing resources and their fishing proceeds and their fishing uh, equipment and others? And since government is providing this service free, plus training, it means that it is de-risking the sector. And once government does this thing, it opens the way for private sector to join. So government per se will not do anything. What government does is to promote an environment that will attract the private sector. And it is the same thing that FAO is doing with this work which we are, we are doing now. FAO has identified a pro problem. There is not much support apart from government and financial institutions, even it is the small ones that, that are supporting more. So FAO is coming in to identify what is on the ground, what we are finding now. This will be followed by issues of capacity building. How can we build capacity to minimize uh, the risks around the fisher folk? How can we build capacity to increase the technical abilities of financial institutions to make good market assessments that will minimize their risks. So, so the, the, the environment is gradually being created. So, so it is an ongoing thing and it will take time. So private sectors should also on their own find innovative ways of coming in to support. And this is what this work is doing that as we are de-risking the fisher folk, we are also encouraging the financial institutions to innovate so that, so that they can serve the sector very well. Thank you, moderator. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Thomas. Maybe in the same vein uh, of government support and private sector, uh, I don't know if Raymond, you want to respond to that as well, in addition to, your, to the earlier question. Um, I could, I could. Uh, first of all, let, let me thank you as uh, organizers, John, Thomas, and also Sushitra for, for this webinar. It's, uh, it's great. There's a lot of information presented uh, by the speakers. I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, it is very useful to have this feedback from the survey to all the stakeholders. So we know what, what, the, what were the outcomes. Uh, often surveys are done and we never hear anything about it anymore. So it's good to get this to, to provide this feedback to everyone and please continue to do so. And this case study seemed very interesting. Um, the, there are some good points that came up to, uh, in terms of identification of, of IDs, what should be done. I like that very much. From the FBO side, I can say that uh, we continue to, to support uh, this process. Uh, not only through uh, the CAFI SSF, as Sushitra explained, and hopefully with all of you and your members, uh, but also through the MDF project, that, uh, Thomas referred to also for Kenya, uh, which is a project that's also implemented in Thailand, and of course the Fish for ACP project, which is starting, uh, which will look more into the fish and agriculture value chain finance. So uh, we're happy, very happy with that. Uh, collaboration um, and I assume that a number of people on this call will be contacted also very soon by, by Africa to uh, to work on, on uh, the value chain development finance development in in their countries in Africa um, to come back to this issue of de-risking of course the government has to uh, has a task to provide an enabling environment for the sector that includes legislation policy, management, also certain types of infrastructure. And that is not in place, then it's very difficult for a sector to develop. Uh, 
then so when there is infrastructure available uh, people fishers will be uh, more interested uh, to invest in in uh, larger boats they are more into security uh, things like that um, and we see more and more in the african countries especially that uh, governments are interested in in blue growth and blue economy and many countries have these kind of strategies through these kind of uh, strategies and policies on, on blue growth and blue economy, it is often possible um, for a sector, including fisheries, but also aquaculture, uh, to obtain favorable conditions uh, for, for financing or investment in the sector, uh, which can be partly channel, chan, uh, channeled through the financial service providers. Uh, often also the uh, the finance ministries are tasked to allocate a certain amount of their credit uh, to the fishery sector. We see this taking place in countries in Asia in particular, uh, but also uh, slightly more and more in, in Africa. So these are entry points for, for funding of this transition to our more sustainable fisheries. Then one final point I want to mention, of course, is also within all this process, there is always the, the the struggle uh, and the, the, the competition between industrial fleets, fishing fleets, and small-scale fishing fleets. You know, there are a lot of access agreements for fisheries, uh, which are signed by African countries with, with the European countries, but also with Japan and China and Taiwan, um, which are probably good for the industri uh, industrial fisheries, but not always good for the small-scale fisheries. Um, and what I would like to say there is that if we uh, can uh, support small scale fisheries more, uh, then these access agreements are probably not necessary anymore. Uh, as we know that most of the fish that is caught under this access agreement is not entering your countries, but is going directly to the countries of the vessels or the flag, st flag states of the vessels concerned. Uh, so uh, therefore, uh, growing your uh, small-scale fishery sector and also the small and medium-sized enterprises in the fishery sector and the fishery value chain in your countries will really increase the, uh, the availability of fish in your countries and uh, contribute to food security. And this was already mentioned, I think, also uh, by some of your speakers. So I'm very happy that this is uh, on the table and we should further discuss and work on it. And uh, you can count on my support. Thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Raymond. Um, I see a number of hands, but I wanted to, I wanted uh, Natsif to come in to respond to the question from uh, Manuel, and then David, uh, you can, you can uh, raise your question. So anyone from Natsif who wants to respond to Manuel, mm -hmm. something to do with collateral substitutes? Uh, uh, thanks, Amino. Uh, yes. I'll try to uh, respond, but David may come in. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, collateral substitution in our <clears throat> product and financing mechanism is uh, aimed at trying to minimize the risk uh, through various uh, studies that we have undertaken as a bank. <clears throat> we realized that collateral was one of the the major hindrances to uh, farmers accessing credit from uh, us. So we came up with that uh, uh, mechanism to ensure that we, 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 we solve that problem uh, to make it easier for farmers to have access to product. Uh, like I said in our presentation, we are in rural areas. Uh, so for us to be relevant, uh, we needed to be innovative uh, to ensure that we include <coughs> as many farmers as possible. So how it works is that um, for asset financing, mainly what we do is instead of asking for collateral, the same asset that the farmer gets becomes collateral. For instance, if a farmer applies for say a boat, so we use the same boat as collateral. So the, we don't ask for any other asset uh, to be collateral. So we substitute that collateral for this, just that asset that is, is gotten. For instance, if he has got, also gotten a tractor, we, 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 that same tractor is the, becomes the collateral. 
what we do is we just ask a farmer to maybe make uh, a small deposit uh, to cover up, or which we call a guarantee fund uh, from the farmer. So a farmer may deposit say, 10 percent of the, the value of the asset then um, that plus the, the the actual asset is what we take as collateral in the bank basically that's what we, how it works hope i'm clear thank you yes you're clear but i would i would probably ask you another question i'm just also wondering um uh, justin uh, collateral is very easy in fishing you know when you're you know, financing tangible assets uh, like boats. Uh, but fishing also requires other support equipments, you know, like gears, nets, and things like that. I'm a bit curious about how you work with the other support gears. You know? So the other, okay, the other support gears, we, it depends uh, on the, we, we do an assessment. Uh, okay. on, yeah, on top of that, we offer, uh, we may offer some additional uh, because our collateral, our asset finance works. We don't give money to the okay. to the farmer. Yeah, we give them uh, an asset. But in that case, uh, a farmer may request that we give them addition on top of the value of the asset. We give them something uh, that, that actual cash uh, for working capital. Uh, so I think maybe they can use that to buy the other other small small uh, requirements that uh, uh, they may use in the in the in their production. But I think it depends on the ex exactly. It depends on the the uh, assessment, and I think the needs are unique depending on who the farmer is and what they do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Justine. Uh, the other hand I saw was Mirera. Mirera, are you here? Yes, I'm in. Okay, you can yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, I really wish to appreciate uh, uh, the presentations made, uh, and uh, has given quite a lot of uh, insights into uh, a lot of things that um, really we need to know as we work with the fishers and uh, the fish farmers. I'm fascinated by that. My only contribution on that is that um, based on the information that has been gathered, uh, I believe that uh, in, a, in a way of moving forward uh, and trying to break out some of these um, uh, all the traditions of fishers not being able to invest, maybe we would look into aspects of uh, initiating model or uh, demo uh, uh, aspects uh, that uh, where we could have some fishers being able now uh, to be uh, properly capacity to build and uh, take up uh, credit so that they can be learning uh, situations for the others. Uh, because for example, the case study that we have been given from different uh, areas, I believe uh, if this is shared around, it changes the way that people think and the way they look at uh, credit. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And I think that is very key. Uh, basically what you're advocating for is more pilot projects so that we can, we can generate more evidence uh, you know, to other players who could be interested. So David, thank you so much. Maybe for the sake of the rest, David, David, David is a researcher. Uh, you come from a research institution. So I think your, your input is very, very welcome. Um, Maybe we'll go to the last because of, in the interest of time, I see Maman. Maman, you can ask the question or comment, and then we move quickly to the next session. Oui, merci Maman, beaucoup. over en fait, to you. Merci beaucoup, um, John. En fait, je voulais uh, souligner un point et que uh, j'estime, je pense, et je crois d'ailleurs que il faut qu'on fasse un um, changement de paradigme si nous voulons vraiment financer nos agriculteurs. Poser toujours la question de, de garantie, c'est certes important, mais je pense que la, le plus important de mon point de vue et humblement, c'est de bien comprendre la filière, bien comprendre euh, l'activité et le cycle d'exploitation du producteur. 
à la limite, la garantie ne sert à rien si le dossier qui est soumis au financement du SFD ou de la banque n'est ne, pas bancable. La, la vraie difficulté, et je suis heureux qu'il y ait beaucoup de, de gens qui sont dans le domaine de la recherche ou de la réflexion, euh, c'est de bien comprendre le schéma. Euh, nous avons fait beaucoup de financements juste en, en analysant bien la chaîne de valeur, en comprenant qui fait quoi, à quel moment, et à quel moment et quels sont les, les facteurs clés. Et euh, avoir simplement une fiche une fiche technique qui explique clairement comment euh, on fait la culture ou comment on fait le pêcheur, ce serait déjà un très, une très grande avancée pour euh, les institutions de financement, les banques, les SFT. Parfois, nous pêchons et nous les reconnaissons humblement par la méconnaissance du cycle d'exploitation. La vraie difficulté, c'est de comprendre le cycle d'exploitation et il n'y a pas mille façons que de dialoguer avec les professionnels du secteur, les amener à se structurer, à, à rendre bancables leur flux. Voilà ce que je voulais faire. Il nous faut un vrai paradigme shift pour parler en anglais. Merci beaucoup, Jean. Thank you so much, uh, Maman. Uh, in fact, Maman, Can I go you uh, uh, this according to my head manager. Razak, are you speaking? Is it possible for me to speak according to my head manager? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It is. Razak, okay. but, but okay. allow, allow us to okay. trans transition to the uh, next session, Razak. Because, okay, because, of, because of time. Okay, I know that. Okay. Okay, but what I would ask you is to put your comment on the chat mm -hmm. so that we, we, we revisit it. Okay? On the chat? Please. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. So, like I said, I mean, all, the, and I know if we had more time, we would probably dig deeper. Uh, but let's quickly transition to the next session because it ties with some of some of the comments uh, that have been coming through and and that is the issue of capacity building a lot of you have alluded to elements of we need to understand the sector you know we need to de-risk the sector all these are areas which can form you know some of the capacity building entry points uh, that we are also looking into the study uh, I think maybe I'll quickly, I just have two slides that I wanted to share, but the two slides are mainly thought provoking. And I just wanted you, I wanted your response uh, in, in regards to some of the issues on the slides. Uh, basically, it's, 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 my session is very simple. It's, it's really just about capacity building. Uh, my colleague Thomas, in his presentation, he had a slide on capacity building. There was a list of capacity building options. What we realized from the study was all of you ticked high, high priority, medium priority. I think all of you felt that all those areas that were listed were of high, high priority and they need to be addressed. So those are the things that I wanted, we wanted to get more clarity so that it can inform us in, in regards to the next steps or the way forward. You've heard what Suchitra said through her presentation. CAFI SSF, they're there to do some of these things. FAO, they're also there to support in some of this area. AFRACA as well. So we just wanted more clarity uh, on some of these capacity building areas. Brian, you can go to the next slide. Now, in, in regards to the capacity building, um, we did consult further. With, 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 with some of the institutions. In fact, I remember when I spoke to some of the inst institutions, I was asking them a very basic question. Do you have a department that focuses on fisheries? Yes or no? Do you have staff who have expertise in fisheries? And some of the responses I got were very interesting because some told me, well, John, uh, we don't have an expert here. 
but uh, our institution has made the effort to send some of our staff to some of the training institutions to learn about the fisheries. That was one uh, element that came out. I think another institution also mentioned that uh, they have staff who have been in the sector by virtue of interaction with uh, SSF stakeholders. So that way, they have managed to build their knowledge. Now, these are all well appreciated. Some of you, most of you really just told me, no, we don't have the internal expertise. So all these efforts, they are there, but they're all in piecemeal. You know, they are not well structured. So for, for us at Afraka and FAO, we feel that we need to somehow have a structured way of building the capacity of financial institutions in Africa, because we've seen that there's a gap. And of course, it seems like there's a need. So all these efforts that uh, some institutions are making, even Marigesi, Marigesi, I know in Tanzania, by virtue of your interaction with the sector, you have managed to extend some financing. You talked about some of the development partners that you work with who have also supported you in one way or another. So we just wanted to understand your uh, perception about this, you know, because we feel indeed there's a need and there's a need for structured capacity building among financial institutions. I think all of you have alluded to the fact that, in fact, maybe if, I took, if I'm to quote my man, he said, we need to have an understanding of the sector if we are to lend to the fishery sector. So how do we build that understanding? How do we lend? I have a question there. How do we lend profitably you know, to SSF? Which, which are the capacity building needs you know, that we should consider? So there's a, there's a list there of capacity building <laughs> uh, and And I just wanted to find out, this is now an open discussion. Uh, because from the study, we found that all of this why were high priority or rather medium priority. But maybe just to hear your, your comments or your feedback about capacity building. I think we've had one from Maman that they need more understanding. They need more technical expertise in the fiction sector. But can we be much more concrete in, in, in what we, we really want? Because that will help us to address your capacity building needs uh, moving forward. So there's the table there. And I would like you to, maybe you can, you can just share through the uh, panel or through the pl uh, plenary, but also you can use the chat to just highlight that this is an area that you feel is of high priority and we should consider it. So really, this is really just an interactive session. I have outlined all the capacity building areas on the table. I think they're quite clear. Um, knowledge on fish value chains, number one. Business characteristics of fisheries. All these are technical capacity, you know, aspects that, need, that financial institutions need to take into consider consideration. And remember, sometimes when you need this information to develop your products, it can be a very expensive venture, very expensive. Uh, Catherine, I think you're here. You know, I, I would say NatSev is very lucky to have you working with them because they're getting that service for free. But others may not have that service close to them. And if they need that service, they, they may have to pay for it dearly. And probably that's the reason why Suchitra is so passionate about Kathy SSM because that support is there now, but it needs to be directed appropriately. So I don't know who will be the first to comment or who will be the first to share on what they feel uh, in, in terms of capacity building needs. Maybe you can talk from the point of your institution. John, maybe before uh, somebody comes in, uh, right. I, I, I want to, I, I, I want them to be conscious of, let's create them in levels. Which one will okay. they rank as, say, number one? Let's say we have number one, two, three, four, five. Which category will come to number one? 
as high for financial institutions, which will come to number two, number three, so that we, we clearly know the priorities. Okay. Thank you for, for reinforcing that, uh, Thomas. Shaibu, I, see, I saw your hand very quickly. But as Shaibu is uh, talking, you can just use the chat to actually mention your priority area. So put the area which you feel is high priority. So you can put one as your priori high priority area. You know, so like that. Shaibu, over yes, to you. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear oh. very good. Yes, um, Shaibu from Gesa, Ghana. Uh, oh, the good. list you, you provided is, is, is quite exhaustive. But what I wanted to add is, the first one, the fish value chain should be able to handle the business characteristics. Because if you, if you are doing a detailed uh, commodity analysis, the characteristics should be handled. So uh, maybe if, if for sake of emphasis, else it could have been part of that. Okay. Uh, I believe, I think the rankings are good as it is here. But the other thing has to do with the risk assessment and the cash flow analysis peculiar to fisheries because okay. uh, fishery is a special area, especially when you come to the aquaculture. If the financial uh, institution practitioner is able to know the production cycle, then he can link it with the cash flow to know the repayment schedule and mm -hmm. as to when to give moratorium. So that aspect, the cash flow is very important. But what I also want to look at, what guests are in Ghana, we try to do is we're doing similar things. But at the point, we realize that we have built the capacity of the financial institution to understand uh, uh, agricultural financing and are ready to do that. But from the demand side, they are not fooling because the application they bring are not bankable enough mm -hmm. for the financial institutions to feel comfortable to give out the loan. So as we are looking at the supply side, we, 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 need, to, we need to look at the demand side as well so that the two can move together. That's my contribution. Thank you. And, and I, 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 I acknowledge that there are some players here from the demand side. So it's, this question is not just limited to the financial service providers, but those on the demand side or those who are supporting the demand side, please feel free to also share. So thank you, uh, Shaibu, so much. Uh, I, 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 I value your, your take on, on the priority areas. I understand some areas could overlap and could probably even have the same meaning. I remember when I was talking to one of you, they told me, what, they asked me, what's the difference between cash flow analysis and non analysis? But one is pertaining to the tools. Yeah, but anyway, other, other, other comments from the floor? Other views? I was expecting to see some activity on the chat just to see your priority areas. You can just put, even if it is number six, if you feel uh, that is your high priority area. But Mustafa, I, I really appreciate because uh, you're talking like a banker. You know, the first area you think is, is, is important, of course, is to understand the value chain and also the risk assessment. Uh, banks are very risk averse, so they need to understand that area quite well. Maman, your, your, your hand is still up. I don't know if it's a different question or, or a comment. So any other? Catherine, are you still with us uh, from uh, Wildfish? And the others who are very quiet. Don't, don't tempt me to start. Uh, <laughs> to start mentioning some names because I know some, I know, I know a bit of, about the history of, of your organization and what you're trying to do. Um, probably Albert, Albert uh, from uh, Kenya Women. I don't know. I know you, you've been uh, keen to develop a product in, uh, in aquaculture, you told me. 
uh, I'm, I'm wondering if there's any form of support uh, you may need from, from our side uh, in terms of building your internal capacity. Any other person who wants to come in? David, I see you've written something on the chat. But David, as a, as a, as a research institute, maybe I'm just curious. Uh, do you ever work with financial institutions? Have you ever considered working with them? Uh, uh, yes, but to a limited scale. Uh, okay. But I, but I feel that this is um, because now we have been working with them um, with the fishers and uh, and farmers, and um, we have always faced this challenge of them moving be, be beyond some level, mm -hmm. because as government you can only support some level, but at some point you need the injection of the private sector like the funding agencies in the, the private sector to be able to push them up. Yes. So we have, uh, I think that's an area that we have not explored, but, mm -hmm. but I think um, it's quite fascinating that now we really need to come together and push it up. Okay. In your institute, is there, um, are there training courses that you think can be, that financial institutions can benefit from? Oh, yes, I, I, we, we do learn, uh, mainly what we do is we do um, on-the-job training, okay. especially in terms of if we have to train the fishermen, then we follow them and do a trainings on group dynamics, uh, data correction, mm -hmm. and all that. But usually what has been missing in that is uh, the business bit. Okay. So I've, I've realized that we try as researchers to train business, but I think we are uh, doing it in the wrong way. So, okay. <laughs> so, so we have the, the skills and the techniques to train on the spe okay. specific aspect of fisheries, specific aspect of aquaculture. But now on the investment bit, I think we really need now to bring in the, the banking industry so that as we go to train, then maybe they can be given us lots in that process and also be able to bring things in perspective. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I think that is something that we, we also noted. I, I, I spoke to one professor uh, in Nigeria from Mamadou Bello University, and they have all these courses, uh, even at degree level, but all those courses fail to bring in that business and entrepreneurial uh, angle. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you, you managed to, you know, raise that issue as well. So thank you. Uh, I saw a hand somewhere. Please feel free and just come in. Uh, I don't have to point out your name. Hello. Feel <clears throat> yes. Yes, my name is Esther Goya. I'm the strategy and performance manager at DCB Bank in Tanzania. Okay. Um, we used to be uh, called Dar es Salaam Community Bank, and uh, we actually have, we, we've been doing microfinance, uh, the group guarantee loans, and through the discussion I've, I've, um, I've learned a lot and realized that as a bank, we may not uh, be, be lending directly to the fishermen. Uh, but uh, people who are current, like ladies or the, the mamas in Tanzania who are selling fish, uh, yeah. we have been financing them through the group uh, guarantees and, and stuff like that. But I think one of the challenges that could be facing us as a bank to give such loans would be on the pricing of these loans based on, say, the cost of fund and, and how uh, we, we actually get the funding for our, our um, assets. Is, uh, I don't. I would love to know if there are through the capacity building, um, are there uh, funds that you know through through such the development banks or agriculture banks that could be advanced to the banks that they're able to lend at rates that uh, the fishermen and their communities can actually repay without pushing them further into into uh, you know. Uh, uh, poverty or you know 
I would okay. just love to to know that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's. Thank you so much. Again, you bring in the issue of uh, resource mobilization, but I'm also just wondering from a banking perspective, you know, if if these is, uh, these these uh, funds are availed to your institution, uh, will your institution be ready to take up the funds? Uh, or it is just, you know, you'll integrate it in your general lending and continue with your lending. Is this something you would want, you know, because even as, as an investor, you know, the person providing that concessionary funding that you, you want, you know, they'll also want to, to know that, uh, you know, if, if you understand the sector that you're trying to lend. Um, um, so, yeah. In response to that, we currently have schemes uh, like the micro housing uh, financing schemes that we, we run with uh, the Bank of Tanzania and uh, the Tanzania Re TMRC, the remortgaging finance company. Okay. And um, mm. what we do actually, you, you are actually required to already have a pipeline of um, such people that want such loans and they should also comply to what um, the, the one advancing the funds uh, requires you to do. And uh, since uh, we're, we're talking of capacity building, I believe uh, the investor or whoever is advancing the funds would want the organization to run through the, the capacity building and assess that they're able to actually lend, they understand the, the sector and they're able to support them before they actually uh, lend. So uh, we've already been working with schemes that require us to comply in certain, to a certain extent. Okay. And I, I think that would be the same. Ah, okay. I think that is, that is understandable. Um, so what you're saying is you, your institution needs to create that demand first uh, before the funding comes in. Uh, I don't know if, if uh, you know, which I think is, is, is quite understandable because, again, someone would ask, do you want the funds? You know, do you have demand? You know, so you need to show uh, that demand. Uh, so you bring in a very interesting perspective. It's just that I'm wondering, you know, what should come first? Is it the demand should come first and then the capacity building later? Or, uh, um, <laughs> as, as for as for our uh, uh, bank coming from uh, advancing from a community bank to a commercial bank, we, yes. we have still maintained uh, our microfinancing segment, which works with the community through the group guarantee loans, okay. uh, security group lending. And I think we've done it for almost 20 years now, and uh, actually it's working very well with the community. And uh, we work with part of the value chain of the of the of the sub sector. So um, moving further and supporting the, the the full extent of the value chain is something probably uh, our management would love to to explore. So I wanted to know, based okay. on now that uh, our cost of funding probably would not suit uh, such loans. It would be good to know that there are funds that would be cheaper and allow us to give loans that could actually help uh, the community. Okay, okay. And I think that's where probably even government needs to come in uh, and, and support. But anyway, uh, thank you so much again. Um, I don't know if there's another, another hand, but Esther, was that you? Yes, that was me. Okay, thank you, Esther. Thank you. So, Thomas, um, are you are you are, are you happy? Because I can see the ranking is not coming in. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yes. But, but I I think that the initial comment made by Shaibu, in principle, he he felt that what was there was okay. Yeah. But he. They, they have done an example of capacity building and yeah. he has mentioned the top three. So at least that uh, gears us towards the very top priority uh, uh, areas. But what I must say is that if we are designing a capacity building program, of course, all these will come in. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so 
uh, if we, we finish the program and anybody has any contribution, they can still send it to us. Okay. But the issue of uh, um, our lady who last spoke, uh, the name is uh, Esther. Okay. Yeah, Esther, it's good what you are doing and I'm glad about it. Uh, what I will say is that continue to position yourself because there are development partners around who only fund things that support uh, uh, lifting livelihoods up, like the area that you are doing. So don't lose hope, continue. Uh, and once you are in this program, if you are also not an Africa member, we are inviting you because Africa is also working towards that up to a point where we can link our members to funding sources that could be cheaper to support what they do. Uh, what the funding uh, organizations are asking is that they need to see data. They need to see uh, uh, our output. So we are going to start gather information from all our financial institutions. And that can be a step towards uh, what you are you are talking about. So you are most welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, maybe just to close the session, a few comments from the chat. Uh, Jen, uh, Jen is a central banker, actually. So I'm glad to see a, a central bank representative. Uh, she says, from a policy perspective, governments need to work with financial institutions and development partners to de-risk the sector and assist small scale farmers to commercialize activities. I think that's highly uh, welcome. And uh, now that an, an understanding of the sector is, 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 is actually emerging, uh, I think there probably needs to be more effort uh, to, towards that. Uh, Garsal, I think Garsal, you're just reinforcing what you said, Shaibu. Uh, Garsal would be happy to collaborate and develop training for, or for fisheries and aquaculture for financial institutions in Ghana. So we are currently running special trainings with rural banks in collaboration with the donor project. So thank you, uh, Shaibu. I think you have expressed that interest, which could even for us, could be a pilot area, you know, to, to, you know, to start with you. Uh, Abdul Razak, I come back to you again, uh, to be able to integrate development okay. needs into okay. community development plans, which will yes. be integral part of regional development plans. Yeah, I think this is again, um, part of that government, you know, integration. But I see also an element of advocacy uh, mm -hmm. that uh, some of this work that we are doing, uh, there needs to be a voice that will advocate, you know, for more government support. Uh, and that's the, that is what Suchitra through Kafi SSF will try to do and with Afraka as well. Uh, just so you know, Afraka is also being um, identified as a lead propon proponent uh, in SSF in Africa. So probably we should start having some more learning events uh, for the fisheries, uh, you know, stakeholders. So, so thank you so much. Um, I think in the, we are really not, again, not doing so well with time. So I will want us to wrap up this session uh, and to bring in uh, our final speaker. Uh, and that is uh, Pierre Kwaku. Pierre, I don't know if you're still there. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, Pierre, good. Um, okay. Um, can I speak in French again? Please. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, um, par rapport à cela, moi, je pense que effectivement, le secteur aquaculture doit être pris en compte en prenant en compte nos zones humides, les zones Ramsar qui ont déjà été identifiés effectivement au niveau de l'UNFCC, qui prennent en compte les changements climatiques aussi. Ces différentes zones Ramsar doivent être partie intégrante de nos politiques de développement. Quand elles intègrent nos politiques de développement, elles doivent se décentraliser au niveau de nos régions 
et au niveau aussi de nos collectivités locales. Et maintenant, de sorte à ce que nos collectivités locales puissent les prendre en compte dans leur plan de développement communautaire, de sorte à ce que des organisations de producteurs ou plutôt d'aquaculteurs puissent les porter sous le cautionnement de ces différentes collectivités afin d'être accompagnées par le secteur privé que nous constituons, que nous constituons plutôt pour le financement. Parce que le financement aujourd'hui, euh, comment il se fait au niveau des producteurs aquaculteurs, c'est que ce sont des projets programmes qui les accompagnent, mais des projets programmes qui ont une durée de vie limitée. Mais quand cette durée de vie limitée arrive à terme, comment on fait Il nous faudrait forcément développer euh, des mécanismes d'autofinancement qui puissent permettre la pérennisation des actions ou plutôt des technologies qui ont été mises à disposition des communautés pour pouvoir développer ce secteur. C'est un peu mon intervention. Merci. Thank you so much, uh, Razak. Your point is well taken. Yes, we need long-term interventions. Actually, we did realize there are quite a number of projects or programs that have been, been implemented in the sector. But after they have been implemented, that's it. That's the end of the the project, or rather the interest in that sector. So I think even for programs, there needs to be better exit strategies. Uh, and I think that is where private sector can be more involved. So for the NGO sector who are here, development partners who are here, I think this is something you need to take into account, that it's, it's good even when you're doing these programs that you involve private, private sector uh, so that they can continue with some of the, the learnings. Uh, or lessons from the project. So thank you so much, uh, Abdul Razak. Uh, Kwaku, I uh, hope you're ready. It's now your time. <laughs> yeah, thank you, John. Uh, thank you, and hi, everyone. I'm Pierre Kwaku, and uh, I recently uh, uh, joined the FAO team to work on the uh, Fish for ACP project. And uh, I will be in charge of uh, presenting, I mean, uh, doing a short presentation of the Fish for ACP project. And uh, I will finish with, um, I mean, uh, a uh, with a study. Uh, Africa will be in charge of implementing soon. So concerning uh, the Fish for ACP, uh, it's a five-year, uh, 40 million uh, euro program led by uh, uh, ACP uh, uh, countries and implemented by FAO with funding from uh, 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 the EU and Germany. And uh, the main aim of, uh, of this, this program is to tackle challenges to sustainable free fishery and aquaculture, such as economic performance, limited market access, uh, and poor social and environmental sustainability. And Fish for ACP uh, will be working mainly with uh, value chain uh, in 12 ACP countries. I mean, nine in Africa and uh, uh, the other three will be uh, in uh, 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 Pacific and uh, uh, Caribbean. So Fish for ACP will support uh, uh, both aquaculture, aquaculture and fisheries value chain. Uh, and this different valuation, uh, I mean, include uh, uh, inland and marine fisheries. I, I, I can maybe uh, try to mention uh, some of the valuation. Uh, this will be a, a catfish in Nigeria, a small pelagics in Sao Tome and Principe, Zambia and Tanzania, oyster in Senegal and Gambia, shrimp in Cameroon, and uh, farm tilapia in, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire and Zimbabwe. So uh, fish for ACP uh, aim uh, at improving the sustainability of fishery and aqu aquaculture evolution through five main specific objectives. And uh, the different objectives are uh, robust fisheries and aquaculture improvement strategies are developed and agree with stakeholders economic performance of micro, small, and medium enterprise in selected valuation is improved, 
inclusiveness and the social sustainability of selected value chain are improved. The environmental sustainability of selected value chain is uh, enhanced. And finally, uh, medium and uh, small, uh, medium, uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises in the selected value chain have access to additional source of finance. And uh, recently, um, I mean, uh, and in order to, to complete uh, the activity of uh, Objective 5 of the Fish for ACP program, uh, FAO entered recently into a letter of, of agreement with uh, Africa. I mean, uh, Africa will be in, uh, in charge of uh, conducting a stakeholder analysis of financial and insurance uh, service provider in uh, nine uh, uh, African countries. I mean, uh, uh, concerning the nine uh, selected value chain I mentioned earlier. And uh, Africa will also uh, access the market, the demand of financial and insurance service among stakeholders in the nine selected value chain. Uh, I mean, uh, so they will uh, again reach out to you soon again. I mean, to access uh, your need, your need, and uh, I mean uh, every uh, uh, talk, discuss as well the potential of the sector with you. They will also um, uh, conduct an assessment of the financial policies and uh, evaluate the legal and regulatory environment to identify enabling and constraining factor to financial service provision to the nine selected valuation as well in the nine countries. We will uh, contribute uh, on the valuation finance, I mean, by uh, uh, participating in uh, uh, the nine countries. I mean, we will participate in, in, uh, in uh, commodity, in, uh, I mean, I, I should mention that there is uh, currently an uh, ongoing uh, uh, study, uh, uh, study in the uh, different nine countries. And we have uh, 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 different progress. And Africa, Africa study will start uh, with uh, uh, first with uh, three different countries, Senegal, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and Tanzania, where uh, the progress, I mean, is, uh, is the most uh, uh, advanced in these different countries. So uh, there is some um, uh, platform in some of the countries like uh, Cote d'Ivoire and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, Senegal. So uh, Africa will participate in, I mean, uh, and contribute to, the, to uh, this different, different platform, speaking with uh, different stakeholders and contribute to, to advance uh, uh, valuation finance in these different countries. I will uh, maybe uh, send uh, a, a project fact, fact sheet to uh, uh, John and, and Thomas. Uh, I mean to to include it in the document to be shared to to to, to uh, people. I mean uh, uh, attending this uh, workshop today, maybe to let you uh, have uh, a clear view of the project and uh, uh, how we, we, uh, this project will be implemented on the ground. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kwaku. Um, uh, yeah, we will welcome the, the fact sheet so that uh, our members can see uh, the value chains that we shall focus on. So I think maybe, I think this time I'll hand over to Thomas. Thomas, maybe you can take over from where Kwaku left uh, in terms of our preparations for Fish for ACP. And, uh, and also do the closing. So Thomas, over to you. Thomas, you can unmute, please. Thank you very much, Kweku, for your brief presentation. Uh, you, you have made our work easy before our official letters go to them. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that is very good. We will soon contact uh, some of the countries have been mentioned, the nine countries. If your country is in, please, we are going to contact you very soon that uh, you will help us to uh, get this work done. 
the first stage where we will need your support will be that we will advertise it. We will uh, recruit national consultants, those who are resident in the country, who know the terrain. So we will, we will court your advice so that uh, at your institutional website, you do this advert for us. If there is also uh, some value chain finance expert that some of you have worked with before or know to be very good, you can suggest the name to us because the country once will give a report on what is really happening in the country. So we want a good consultant. So on that note, I will say that um, today has been a very fruitful day. We gave ourselves when we were planning one and a half hours and then we extended to two hours. But now I have seen that we have gone even beyond three hours and three and a half hours. And that tells of your patience and your support for what Africa is doing. Your contributions have been very valuable. In fact, we, we are going to beef our report. Even though you are requesting for them, we will send to you. But the final report that will go to FAO, we will beat them up with all the contributions that uh, you have made them. And we, we, we have noticed that this is a sector that is starved of resources. Uh, we have seen by your contributions that it is a sector that needs support from government, from development partners and all who care. And so uh, in all the documents that will come out, we will make this clearly there for them to see. Uh, we also note the fact that uh, your cost of serving the sector is very high. So one of the strategies that Africa uh, is adopting is to try to look out for sources where we can get some development partners or investors who will provide some kind of uh, credit that is cheaper than what you will mobilize uh, from your own local uh, or domestic uh, market. We also note that for financial institutions to do well in the sector, you need to innovate. And this is key. It is those who innovate who can serve this sector. And that also brings we must the market. Make it. The, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> that also brings the ball back to our court that our financial institutions have made it clear they need capacity building. We have even prioritized uh, some of them. And let me assure you that this work that we have started will not end with this. In fact, FAO. Uh, is going to support some even uh, pilot capacity building programs that we will do some pilot in some places going forward, not immediately. So when we do pilot and we see what works, then we can scale that capacity building up for, for financial institutions in Africa. So we thank you very much we appreciate your time and your support. Those of you who are not members of the Africa Network, please, you are invited to join. You can do it through the address that invited you to, to this uh, meeting. There are opportunities there that will come to you as a member. For example, even the case studies that have been presented, Apart from there going to FAO, we can publish them on our Africa-wide uh, website so that the good works that you are doing will be seen everywhere in Africa. Some may even call you that they want to come and learn from you. And whether you will charge them before you do, you do it or not, nobody knows that. So, so, so there are opportunities in Africa. So we invite you to be part. So on that note, I will say a very big thank you. Uh, as soon as we start the, the, the phase four ACP in, uh, in the nine countries, that will also come to a point 
where we will do a validation uh, workshop. And during that workshop, if even you are not among the nine countries, we will invite you because you have the experience and you have President, the- Is it possible for me to talk to you in box, please? Inbox, yes, you can you can uh, uh, speak to uh, uh, okay, talk, yeah, in the inbox. Mm -hmm. So, on that note, I will say a very big thank you. When you go, send your, your our thanksgiving to your institutional heads who allowed you even to attend this meeting. Uh, Africa runs capacity building programs, which takes into consideration the needs of our members. So some of these issues that you have mentioned, we will factor them in our next capacity building program. We also urge you that if there are some critical areas that you think financial institutions need capacity building, just uh, uh, send those things to us and we will look at them and then consolidate them. So thank you very much. We will link up again, in case of anything, link up to Africa Secretariat. And we are willing to listen to you and to work with you. FAO, thank you very much. You have not left us. You started with us and you are ending with us. We are grateful. Lixia, I saw you there. <laughs> Thomas uh, and Co. Uh, uh, Suchitra, uh, we are very much grateful. And then our own African financial, Africa financial institutions, insurance uh, companies, uh, representatives, we are thankful. God bless you till we meet again. Amen. Amen. Good Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Thank you. Bye. I'll see you. Bye. 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 Catherine and Co. Okay. So Chitra will be will be in touch. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Thomas. It was Bye. great. Bye. <laughs> Hey, MC, thank you. I forgot to thank you. Thank you. Ah, it's uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Lot, uh, it's okay, Thomas. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. I uh, wish you well. That's been nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, David, you did well. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Very thanks much. a lot. Thanks a lot. Good. All the Great. best. Great. Great. Good. Good.